technology, the fastest moving force in the galaxy, engineered by the smartest minds on the planet, designing, developing, pioneering, shattering what was previously thought possible. You think you know how fast tech moves? Well, buckle up, because we're going supersonic. Get ready to be rocked to your core processor, because this is CES. HD plasmas bigger than the sky in front of you. Phones and PDAs that could reach you on the moon. Robots, high-tech toys, and gadgets that are days away from taking over your life and the planet. Battle-hardened tech experts Kevin Pereira and Olivia Munn will bring you behind the closed doors of the Las Vegas Convention Center for an exclusive G4 look at all the excitement. Fans of what's next, you're about to witness the sharpening of the cutting edge. This is the insider's only view of the future and your exclusive pass to the 2009 Consumer Electronics Show. All of it happens now. the Consumer Electronics Show, CES09 Live. I'm Kevin Pereira. Yes, you are. What's up, everybody? I'm Olivia Munn, and we are bringing you a jam-packed two days of bleeding-edge electronics. Now, what happens here today and tomorrow will shape the future of tech as we know it. That's right. Now, we're standing here in the middle of 1.7 million square feet of exhi exhibit space. That's roughly the size of 29 football fields. I'm told this, I've never played it, I'm <laughs> fragile, but <laughs> You've seen it on TV. it's large. Uh, and over the next two days, this massive space will bring us close to 20,000 new product announcements from 2,700 exhibitors. That's a lot of numbers. Yeah, you want, you you want some more numbers? Give me some numbers, lay it on me. 180,000. That is the number of attendees that are expected to crash through these doors. All to get a look at the hottest tech of tomorrow. Now, this is stuff making its worldwide debut. You can't see it, buy it, or check it out anywhere other than right here on E4. So coming up this hour, there are hundreds of cell phones on the showroom floor. We'll find out if a new Android tablet is indeed the iPhone Ooh, killer. we're bringing that out there here, yeah, huh? iPhone happening. killer. And you might not think of cars when you think of CES, but when we show you technology that lets you get text messages on your <laughs> dashboard, you will change your mind. And hear screeching tires. <laughs> then we take a look at Microsoft's head honcho, Steve Ballmer's keynote address. Find out everything you need to know about Halo Wars and Windows 7 directly from the man himself. Plus, Grammy-nominated rapper Akon is making his debut in the world of tech. He's going to stop by to show us his new slot radio portable media player. Sounds dirty. <laughs> now, since the information will be flying fast here, be sure to get the latest CES photos, videos, news, and more at G4TV.com slash CES. Yeah, just imagine that you're, like, reading it on a futuristic hologram computer. Channel your inner blitzer. <laughs> now, because CES is so gigantic, there's no way that we could bring it to you just alone. That's right. So to cover this massive amount of awesome Awesomeness. We've got our team of experts out on the show floor, so let's check in with Kristen Adams. Thanks, guys. One of the biggest stories at CES this year is green tech, and I'm going to be checking out some of the hottest gadgets. Plus, I'll be taking you inside the digital experience, an event so exclusive, half the G4 staff couldn't even get in. Big C, what you got for us? Thanks, Kristen. For me, it's all about cars, like this Candy Continental right here. I'll be checking out the latest in GPS, night vision, as well as the Microsoft car. If it's on wheels, I'm on it, and the hottest rides are right here. Allison, we're checking with you. Well, Big C, you want gadgets? I got them. I am in the Asian Pavilion, where you will not believe some of the insane things that I've seen. I am going to show you all the stuff that you don't really need, but you definitely secretly want. Plus, I'm going to check out the hottest new mini camcorder and this awesome TV that you control by waving your arms. Back to you guys. Thanks. Thanks so much, guys. And if that panel of genius wasn't enough, We've got more. That's right. We'll also be joined by Gadget Prawn Hero, one half of the musical duo Hard and Firm and lover of all things with the circuit board, Chris Hardwick He's will be hero? here. He wears a cape. He does in wear his a cape time. sometimes. Yeah. And 
we've got the one and only Dave Matthews on board too. Not only does he contribute to PC Magazine and Make, but he also holds over two dozen patents yeah. himself. Hey, Dave, way, way to make us feel like underachievers. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I he created hard. anything. I think he just printed out the patents and holds them <laughs> in his wallet just oh. to impress the lady. Well, I could do that. But it works. You should. <laughs> but right now, we're going to kick things off with a hands-on demo of a new tablet device that's running Google's Android operating system. So we have the newest Android device, but. Listen to this. It's not a phone, and it's from a company we haven't really heard of before called Genie. Yeah. Now, what do they have in the way of hardware to support this awesome OS? A lot of good stuff, Olivia, actually. The, the Genie Move It Mini tablet has a 4.3-inch touchscreen with a 480 by 272 resolution, and it's got Wi-Fi built in, so there's no need to worry about a new cell phone contract. That's awesome. You get this device, you know and you're those. good to go. I know you do, so yeah. channel your hate uh, away <laughs> from this product because it's doing the right thing. Built-in mic and webcam for VoIP and Skype, which is nice, and it's got a soft keyboard, which means that this might actually have, well, Google's calling it the cupcake, uh, cupcake update, which sounds delicious, but odd. Uh, and it's for the Android OS, and it includes an on-screen keyboard. It's not even on the G1 yet, but I, it's you, here. So, so we can use Skype on that. Yeah, like, you can use Skype huge to and me. a built-in webcam for actual video conferencing. That's amazing. Only 256 megs of storage, but it does have a micro SD slot, so you can't expand so that. So there it is. So there you go. So, okay, we know Android is good because we saw it on the T-Mobile G1 phone. You guys remember that one? Right. Like stability and ease, ease of use. Uh, so... I'm going to ask, the tablet, is it going to, is it going to have all that stuff and more? Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and it works well. I mean, look, it's the Android OS, so everything you love about Android runs on this thing. Um, if you remember the G1, we really were yeah. impressed by its touchscreen. It felt great. Um, this this the little guy here, the, the, this has a resistant touchscreen, um, which I was worried about. But actually, while, while playing with it, it feels good. I just worry about future, future proof with multi-touch, because mm -hmm. that's always the big thing. Can you do multiple gestures, yeah. multiple touches on the screen? Yeah. And I know that's tough to do with, with uh, resistive screens. Uh, not implemented yet, but again, like, this is... This is still a prototype, so we yeah. don't know how that's going to go. Hopefully but, they're listening and then they make sure that happens. Yeah, of course. And the keyboard is a huge fix. Remember, again, it's a prototype. So we hope this thing will get better. But right now, it feels good. It works good. So if you don't actually need this device to have a phone in it, you're perfect. You've got VoIP. You've got uh, the Skype built in. You're good to go as long as you're in a hotspot. Okay, so reminder, this isn't a phone. And we've seen Android on phones. So right. why is it on Genie's tablet? Well, that's the beauty of Android is that it, it's just an open source operating yeah. system. Whatever device you want to put it on, you can. Whether it's a cell phone, a tablet, a toaster. Like, I'm <laughs> Sure, we're going to see Android-powered toothbrushes in the near future, and I will touch them and love them. So I'm going to ask you a question that I already know the answer to, which makes yes. me very excited. How much will it be? Okay, 149. And and. And again, there's no contract. Yes, so, no contract. No contract. 149. The device that. is yours. And be clapping. they're supposed to be available uh, in the middle of the year. So yes. keep an eye out for this guy. It's actually really impressive. Yeah, they're, we're live, so I think they're afraid to clap. But you guys should be okay, very happy. Noise. There's no contracts, yeah. and I am. Now, they're too busy getting free USB keychains from Boots. They're so like, what? what's going on, TV? No, we, we like you like a friend. And as with <laughs> any Android device, the possibilities will go as far as the developer community wants to take Correct. it. So make sure to look for the OS to get fine-tuned to this tablet in the very near future. Yes. Now, sure, we all know that CES is awesome. But, yeah! But how did it get that way? I mean, was it born awesome like I was, or did it have to work at it like some of us? Aw, I, I had an awkward phase. I think I... You're trying to grow out. You're growing out, growing of, out it. of it now. You're getting there. Okay. You're getting there. Well, for the answers to Kevin's questions, let's take a look at the history of CES. Let's. The Consumer Electronics Show, aka CES, is the biggest, baddest tech event on the planet. Contained within the four walls of the Las Vegas Convention Center are the most exciting and mind-blowing innovations our 21st century brains can conceive. But CES wasn't always the massive international spectacle we know today. Back in 1967, a small group of visionaries huddled together in the heart of Manhattan to unveil their genius to the world. A few gadgets and gizmos were presented, but little did they know the potential and significance the show would have today. In the 70s, CES brought us a new machine called the VCR and also gave us the first unveiling of Atari. CES in the 80s was all about the camcorder, Nintendo, and the CD. And even though there were only two computer manufacturers present in 1995, compared to the hundreds that we see today, the 90s brought us DVDs, the DVR, and the dawn of the HD revolution. The CES of today is packed with iPhones, plasmas, and Blackberries. If it plugs in or shorts out, it's been at CES.
At the annual star-studded CES keynote speech, people are all ears for the biggest announcements in the tech world. We're going to show you a couple things that we haven't shown publicly before. Even when the big announcements don't go as planned. They say we're ready to do the slideshow. That thing keeps blinking, so uh, I think, but I think not. So maybe we'll move on yet again. Every year, the world watches for a glimpse at the products that eventually change our lives for the better. You essentially can control your car from your frigging phone. Year after year, CES gets bigger with more celebrities, more CEOs, and even more groundbreaking announcements, like Bill Gates' retirement. So this will be the first time since I was 17 that I won't have my Microsoft job. Unlike Vegas, what happens at CES does not stay at CES. Big or small, thin or tall, CES is the only place where imagination truly becomes reality. <laughs> CES is 41. 41. 41. It's like the, the cool older brother I never had, you know? Wait, you have. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess I have an older brother. I just, you... I doesn't love him. But that's. Aww. Really? But it's still cool, so hey, <laughs> I you, love you, you bro. Love his wife. I do, I do, She's fantastic. I, I love them all. All right, you guys, this show is basically our large-scale, nationally watched sporting event. Yes. So keeping that theme in mind, we've got the following video. Yes, it stars the comedy duo of Hard and Firm, of course, featuring our pal, Chris Hardwick. <laughs> To the desert, got some microchips and beer, and nothing rhymes with desert. I need OLEDs on my UMPCs, cars with LCDs in every place they shouldn't be, quadruple graphics cards for my DSLRs. I don't care that there's no apples, they got robot guitars. Consumer electronics, all the crap you can buy. Touch screen for my toilet while I Twitter on the and a toaster with Wi Fi. I bought last year, I done throw it in the trash. I'll get a wireless router that I can use on a plane. And a Blu-ray converter that plugs right into my brain. 12.1 surround sound stereos for your trucks. That if you buy them at the booth are only 12,000 bucks. Strippers giving demos and seminars too. I'll get a bag of swag and some exotic strain of the flu. Consumer electronics. There's no place better to be Until next week when I'm a whacking it at AEE There's a lot of Asians <laughs> There sure are I was counting my Asians in the background <laughs> that was awesome. are. I am now officially ready for some gadgets And possibly some football Really? Football? Yeah, I might be To watch or play on 360 <laughs> And Maybe a little Hank Williams Jr. Yes. A little bit. So thank you so much, Hard and Firm. Well done, guys. That was awesome. Coming up, tons more gadgets and tech, including the Texas Instruments Pico Projector. It's the size of a Blackberry. It's amazing. The texty thing, not the eating thing, by the way, in oh, case okay. you're confused. Yes. yes. Plus, we find out what happens when Microsoft decides to make a car. <laughs> Buckle up. We'll be right back. Cars with LCDs in every place they shouldn't be. Quadruple graphics cards for my DSLRs. I don't care that there's no apples, they got robot guitars. Do you need some help? Hey. M&M's, have them at your Super Bowl party. Hey, look, we're on the guest list. Ah, uh, that's the menu.
He drives girls back to their ex-boyfriends. What do I do? Before she can love you, she has to hate me. But he may be falling for his best friend's girl. What sucks is having an ass the size of... You think that's too big? My Best Friend's Girl on unrated Blu-ray and DVD January 13th. Sugar-free Tic Tac Chill, the perfect balance of taste and freshness. You know what's good about the AEE show? This is insanity. The vibraphone, you throw it down your pants, who knows what you want to do with that thing. I wish we could turn our cameras and show you the women getting tied up, but we cannot. Women love sex. Thank God for technology. I've tied myself up and blindfolded myself and waited for someone to come home and find me. <laughs> Some guys come for the... Some guys come for G4. Adult Entertainment Expo 09. Two hour exclusive coverage featuring the AVN Awards. January 25th, only on G4. This commercial changed my life. It all started when I used this free research service. A computer and a desire to succeed is all you need. With all the money I made, I bought a new home and a new car. My goal for next month $60,000. Use your computer to make more. I love the freedom my home business offers. And the money just keeps getting better. Not working from home? Then you're missing out on your share of a billion dollar industry. Visit this website now. I make over $9,000 a month working part time. I make over $5,000 a month. Never thought I'd make this much right out of school. All you need is to visit this website. They showed me how to use the power of television to build real wealth. I'm making over $12,000 a month. Check it out yourself. You'll see why I love working from home. Ready for more wealth? Put your computer to work now. Start making more from your home by going to this website today. Log on to 82hbiz.com now. Coming up this hour, we got exclusive looks and sneak peeks, and they're actually probably the both uh, the same thing. Now that I think yeah, about I think it, that, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We got them both, or we got yeah. them for you. Now we are about to look at a device right now that is capable of destroying the time-space continuum. Uh, Wait, that sounds odd. Yeah, I, I, I may have read the description. I didn't wrong. see that on the spec sheet, but that's fine. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get elbow deep in some tech. And this advanced look segment brought to you oh, by Acura. <laughs> Projectors, you tend to think of big, bulky things in a conference room that your laptop can never connect to the first three <laughs> times. How is Texas Instruments changing that? Well, they created it's it's a new ultra portable DLP technology. It's called the Pico projector. We we showed it off for a minute last year. You they were had super a, in love with yeah, it. Yeah, they had a prototype kind of cardboard fake cell yeah. phone that would just uh, project a, a fake image essentially. And what we have here is this is the Samsung MBP 200. This uh, it, this has the Texas Instruments Pico technology built right in. And it works. It's here as promised, and it works. So what is this Samsung able to do? Uh, it's got more functions than most standard projectors, actually. It's got a file viewer, a picture viewer, music player, video player, 2.2-inch LCD screen, uh, standard stereo earphone jack, which mm -hmm. is nice. Use it for whatever earbuds are connected to a sound That's system nice. if you need to. And a micro SD slot with storage up to 16 gigs. Wow. So it packs quite a lot in this tiny little body. Is it compatible with a wide variety of formats, or just like one or two? Uh, no, it absolutely is. Uh, image viewer supports JPEG, GIF, animated GIF, MVP. Uh, Music player is uh, MP3, WMA, AUG. I mean, the list goes on and on. The video player, this wow. thing actually plays DivX and XVID wow. right out of the box. Windows Media Video 9, MPEG 2, you name it. And it supports PDFs, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, text docs. So if you're like the Road Warrior business guy, this will support all those files. But it's on right now. and, oh, and I'm actually projecting onto you. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't but mind. I can see, you see Can it? you guys even see that? I mean, no, here, just stand there. You're good. Oh. I'm going to let me get that hair out of the way. But there we go. Oh. And I can go up and I can... Uh, Hold on, I can select. Hold on, yeah, let, me, let me just get, let me just adjust the focus here, and uh, let me load up some video. You're welcome, CES. <laughs> Uh, but hang on, and, and the focus is super easy to adjust, so as I back this up, there's going to be a video playing any second here. There Could we go. Great if I was touch screen? It's on your neck. I, I wish. Wipe it. I wish. 
Get it. I would propose immediately. <laughs> um, so there we go. As you can see, it's playing playing video, easy to adjust the focus, and uh, it can throw quite a lot of damage. Would it look better on an actual screen? On an actual screen, yeah. I think it looks it looks great on the Mystic Town. Okay. <laughs> so uh, hey, I have not. I've you went to Hawaii. Hawaii. I'm sorry. I, Don't let me Mystic take that Tan. away from you. Okay. Uh, I usually do that. Now, is this device uh, more for kids who want to like show off like you know the latest nut shop videos, or, <laughs> was... or is it like for traveling you know salesmen looking to impress clients with their tiny are the, projector? Are the tweens proud of their nut shot videos now? They're um, like, dude, you got to see this, Tom. I totally split it open. Have you seen our show? Oh, true, true. <laughs> yes. No, the Samsung is better for the traveling business type. Um, it also functions uh, as the standard Pico projector, which is ideal again for the traveling salesman. Optima is actually using this technology for their PK101 projector. It doesn't have features like file browsing, which this Samsung does. Uh, but it does connect to laptops, PCs, mobile devices through USB. Nice. And that thing has a 1.5 hour battery life. Mm -hmm. It can actually project a, an image up to five feet, which is incredible. And it's got a built-in uh, 0.5 watt speaker. So wow. for teeny little noises, it's perfect. That's, uh, so this is uh, basically everything you were hoping to, to have yeah, last year. Yeah, I mean, year. I wanted what, the Pico I, to come through, and it but did. But what I loved is that it was just a, it was cardboard, but you could see what it was going to be, and right. they lived up to it. Yeah, and again, you're going to see this built into cell phones, into other yeah. MP3 players, portable media players. I mean, this is going to have it all. So no matter which device you end up getting, I promise eventually nut shots will be projected <laughs> onto playground walls. It will happen. Or just whip it out in the subway and make everybody watch your home videos. I'm excited we're starting strong. Something great. There it is. Very exciting. Now, you guys. Ford is a giant in the automotive industry, and the same goes for Microsoft in the PC market. For a while now, there's been talk of these two titans teaming up. Right now, let's find out if hitting Control Alt Delete will get you out of a DUI. Thanks, guys. Okay, so after a year of waiting, here it is. Let's check out how Microsoft and Ford plan to change our driving experience. So the entire point of this system is that you literally never have to lift a finger. You receive a text message, it's going to read it. You need directions, ask it. It's totally voice operated. I'm here with Greg, the director of product management with Sync. Tell me about the system and how it works. Well, here in the center console, we've got a USB port. You can plug in a memory stick with your favorite MP3s on it. Plug an iPod, a Zune in there. And then through speech interface, you can ask for an artist, a track, an album. And I hear that played through the car system. Oh, that's hot. Now, in your opinion, what's the hottest feature that the Sync system offers? Well, the Sync system also has a Bluetooth hands-free kit. So you bring in any Bluetooth-powered phone, and you can do voice uh, calling, of course. But it also supports text messaging, which is pretty cool. Now, I have a 66 Impala. Is this system only for Fords, or can it go into other cars? The Microsoft Auto System is built to work with any car. Uh, right now, it's in Ford, and uh, it's in Fiat as well in Europe. How much is it going to cost to get this sync system into your ride? So sync is available for free. It's a standard feature in many of uh, Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury cars. And it's a $395 option in the vehicles that don't have it as a standard feature. Now that's what I'm talking about. The future car tech of tomorrow is finally here. And I can't wait to get it in my own ride. Stage, what y'all got cracked? <laughs> Sync better have autopilot. And I'm talking kid level stuff from the 80s Night Rider, not the, the crappy new one. Time for a poll. Weigh in voice. Let your voice be heard. You got to vote. What will be the biggest technological breakthrough in 2009? Is it the iPhone killer, wall size TVs, broadband everywhere, or the iPhone 3.5G? To vote, go to g4tv.com slash CES or text your answers to G4TXT. That's 44898. Standard rates do apply. $17 a text, by the way. Coming up, we've got CES keynote speech highlights. That part where Bomber threw the, the chair at the iPhone user, we cut that, though. Plus, we've got Grammy-nominated rapper, songwriter, and tech fan Akon here on stage. It's CES, everybody. Keep watching. Are there any drawbacks? And are they all the cracked up to? Good thing I read lips. Uh, I want to know about touch screens and are there any drawbacks? And and yes, there can be. We're not cheering for drawbacks, we're cheering for CES, but with regard to touch screens, uh, most of them are made of glass, so they glare, they leave fingerprints behind, you'll get the Cheeto dust residue all over it. And the other thing is, if it's tacked on, it can be gimmicky. And we saw that with the, uh, the HP uh, little touch screen computer that we used the other day, where when, when products and software are designed for touch screen, they're great and they flourish and it's awesome. But the moment you go back to a piece of software that's not designed for a touch screen, it just feels wrong. So those are some downsides. Not necessarily a fault with the screen or the technology itself, but it's out there.
Now, there are so many gadgets on the floor, it's total chaos. Everyone is fighting for your attention. So we decided to cut through the mayhem, and we're setting Alice and Luce to find the most interesting products and give their creators 30 seconds to make us want them. Allison? Hey guys, I'm here with Paul Goldberg, the brain behind the world's newest, smallest camcorder. Can we check this thing out? Because this thing just redefines the idea of big things coming in small packages, and it's really cheap. Let me pull it out of my pocket. Out of your pocket! This is a high-definition camcorder. It records at 1080p, takes a 5-megapixel still shot, runs on rechargeable batteries, less than $150. Do you hear that? 150 bucks for this thing. And you pick it up, it weighs like nothing and fits in your pocket. I mean, no concert's gonna go unboot like now with this thing out there. Back to you guys. Wow. Okay, 30 seconds. Not a lot of time, but thanks, Allison. We'll check back in later for more. But now here's Olivia with our gadget prawn guru, Chris Hardwick. Hello. Hello. I, I have to say, this is how much of a guru Chris Hardwick is. Can you hug? Chris All Hardwick right. is gonna show us what he pulled out of his pocket to slow up. All yeah. right, listen. What is this? It's it's an iPhone battery this? charger because the it's iPhone massive. has such bad battery life uh, with 3G. This is what he pulls out of his pocket. Yeah, I got this. I got this at Macro. But look, you can you can charge another device under there. Hey, come on, who can say no to this? Oh, crap! Oh, the lights. Look nah, at that. Know. Yeah, exactly. Hey, do you have sex? Uh, what is that word? Oh, okay. Later. All right, good. <laughs> now, one of the highlights here at CES is the Wednesday night keynote address. It's traditionally given by Microsoft legend Bill Gates. I've heard of him, but uh, with Gates having retired to spend more time counting his piles of money, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean helping the poor, yes. <laughs> uh, Microsoft new CEO Steve Ballmer took center stage. Here's all the sound bitey goodness. After a tough 2008 filled with some difficult news, I'm ready for some optimism, innovation, and vision. Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer's inaugural keynote featured such highlights as the public beta of Windows 7 OS, which promises to win the hearts and minds of those disenfranchised by Windows Vista. Microsoft is transforming what Windows is from a PC operating system to a connected platform and experience. The much-rumored Zune Mobile has been confirmed to be just that, a rumor. But other new Zune features promise to streamline your portable entertainment. We double the number of people on Zoom Social to well over 2 million and continue to build the idea of a social experience around music. Microsoft unveiled two new games in the world of Halo, including the highly anticipated Halo Wars. An average Halo player across all 25 million of those people plays 150 hours of Halo on Xbox Live. After a cloudy 08, things seem to be clearing up for Windows and Microsoft in the new year. You know, Steve, Bill had a very big sweater to fill, and you filled it totally. <laughs> I thought you had a date, Dad, and I'm going to leave on that. Thank you all. Yeah. Of course, we're going to have more Microsoft exclusives over the next two days. Uh, I'm heading off to grab some cameras for our oh. camera roundup in a bit. Kevin, the show is back to yours. Why, thank you, sir. I have a, a spare generator that I carry around for my iPhone as well, so we should, we should compare. Uh, it's time to get to the bottom of things and break down what we just saw during Microsoft's keynote address. It's time for the loop. <laughs> Joining me now, Deputy uh, Director for Special Projects at Forbes, is David E. Walt. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm not used to talking to you in the flesh. I feel I like you should hold a picture frame I around or something like that. Or, you know, Pleasure to have you here, though, in the flesh. Nice to be here. All right, so let's talk Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, we just saw the package. Uh, you saw the keynote in its entirety. What were your thoughts? You didn't seem exactly blown away. Yeah, I mean, you kind of go into a speech with Steve, Steve Ballmer expecting to see what you see on the internet. Right. You want the monkey boy dance. I want the armpit sweat. Want I want the chair big, flying sweaty, everywhere. Yeah. bellowing, angry ape. And we didn't get that at all. He was very low-key. I guess part of that is that Microsoft doesn't have a lot to crow about right now. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, well, okay, so, so the, fir the first keynote without Bill Gates, I mean, we got Macworld without Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. no Bill Gates here. Uh, you know, did Ballmer do good? I mean, yes, he wasn't sweating profusely, but I mean, yeah. did, he, did he fly his he, wares he okay? He passed the class. Okay. You know, he didn't get up there, he didn't embarrass Microsoft. He was confident. If investors were watching, he reassured them, hey, we're doing just we're fine. We're going to do just fine, but yeah. he didn't get him any attention. He didn't announce anything special. He didn't, you know, get aggressive. He didn't do anything to really get some headlines from Microsoft. But the, the we're doing just fine, you know, motto, uh, if I'm an investor, I'm looking at it, I'm like, hey, you guys jumped right into Windows 7. You completely ignored Vista. Yeah. I'd be a little worried about that. Yeah. I mean, are they admitting defeat on the Vista front by doing that? Yeah, you know, I actually counted. 
hour or something long keynote, he only said the word Vista once. And that was in the context of like, oh, this program will be compa compatible, compatible with, with Vista. But don't worry, it also works with Windows 7, right? So they totally have like kind of given up on it. Wow. They're not going to just ditch it because they still want people to buy it over the next year. Sure. But they're not selling is it. That, is that what people want at this point, though? They want Microsoft to just move on from Vista instead of oh, trying yeah. to, con to convince us that we want to use it? It has such a bad reputation. People have had such terrible experiences with it that people are looking ahead and saying, oh, no, 7 looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll upgrade to that. And what about the Zune? I mean, we know it was there, but the message seemed to be, hey, we've added some users. Great. You know, yeah. we're selling a couple. Yeah. I mean, what, what's, what, was it a bad sign that there wasn't more attention paid to the Zune? Well, it's the same kind of thing. You know, there's not that much to talk about. They've made a couple of content deals. They certainly are selling more. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you sell 12 in a year. When you only sold 10 last year, it's right. not that big a deal. Right. And they didn't want to get into details of the news, you know, because they've had the big crashes lately of where course. things all broke on New Year's Eve. So it's kind of a topic they wanted to avoid. Uh, understandably. Now, I, I thought it was interesting because, you know, Apple says, hey, we're going DRM-free, which means you purchase songs on iTunes, they might be able to work on your Zoom now, mm -hmm. you know, for in the, in, the, in the near future. They didn't seem to mention that at all. Do you think they're going to try to make any plays off the fact that now those iTunes libraries might work on their device? You know, it would be smart for them because the Zoom social thing is much as they want people to believe that it's really popular, no one really uses it. Right. And their model of the subscription thing is not caught on like they want it to. So it's a good way to kind of surf off of Apple's success. All right, I'll call Bomber and let him know then. I'll send him an Evite and we'll have a little, a little presentation. Um, what about the Xbox? I mean, we saw, we, we, we saw some Halo Wars there. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on for, for the 360? Yeah, we saw the new Halo games. We have a sort of uh, defined release date for them. The other big thing we saw for the 360 was this game Kodu, which is the video game builder. It's sort of a very basic programming tool. Sure. A little bit like Little Big Planet. I was going to say, is this their answer to, to LBP? It, it kind of is. It's a little bit more programmy than LBP, uh, but it's sort of their response to it. And they had the 12 year old girl come up on stage, show off the software. And it was funny because she was actually much more dynamic and charismatic than Steve Ballmer. <laughs> of course. Was. Of course. Well, she had something to be excited about. Right. Um, they, they also talked a little bit about future concepts. Mm -hmm. So so looking uh, off to the horizon, what is Microsoft bringing us? Well, once again, it was, it was kind of flat. You know, the things they really, they showed us a little previews of things in the last with stuff like, oh, look, we have new features that we're adding into Windows Messenger. So who's going to get excited about right. that? They're showing off some, some flat displays, kind of like an e-ink piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, it had like a picture of a hand and some bones on it. But like it wasn't really, it wasn't video. It was just kind of like, you ever see those, those, those pieces of paper where you tilt it in the light and it changes colors? Oh, yeah, yeah, It yeah. didn't look like much more than that. So nobody really got excited about oh, that man. stuff. So, so, I mean, you're, you're like, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but rate it. Give me a, a what out of five do you give this keynote and, and, and the outlook for Microsoft? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a three. Yeah. They didn't do anything wrong. They got Got decent headlines this morning, but nobody's talking about it even this afternoon, tomorrow morning. We want a sweaty bomber. I know. Someone give that man I some. I want developers, developers, <laughs> That's developers, That's exactly what developers. I want. Yeah, just yeah. kick open a flat screen or something, yeah, man. Yeah. All right, David, always a pleasure, sir. Thank Thanks you for coming much. on and keeping us in the loop. Thanks. All right, guys, let's go on over to Olivia. He said sweaty bomber. Coming up, it's a man with 23 Billboard Hot 100 songs under his belt. That's two more than me. He's got me on that one. I'm talking about That's the same thing. Skip. Hey, everybody, we're back here live at G4's exclusive coverage of CES 09 Live. If, if it's new and it's shiny and your dad's scared of it, we're going to show it to you. So sorry, dads. You, you'll figure it out eventually, probably right around the time it becomes obsolete. All right, right now, let's go over to Miss Olivia Munn. Thanks, Kev. Now, when you think of tech, you think of wireless devices, big screen plasmas, and of course, of course, you think of Grammy nominated rapper and RB sensation icon. I know I do. He is here with us live to talk about Slot Radio. But first, let's take a closer look at the one and only Akon. Producer, rapper, 
Chart Topper. Akon does it all in style. And now this multi-platinum recording artist is bringing his golden touch to the tech world with a brand new way to listen to your favorite jams. <laughs> I, I have to start by telling everybody that Akon just said, you look great on television. In person, not so much. Not so much. Featuring Lil Wayne, T Pain, Young Jeezy, Wyclef, are they with you right now? No, actually not. I came in by myself. Oh, solo, nice. Yeah, nice. I wanted to take all the attention. Well, then you have it. People are screaming your name out here. So <laughs> I gotta ask you, we're at CES, so do you have a favorite gadget? Yeah, I'm actually holding it. Ah, oh, this is the one I want. Blackberry, <sighs> listening? It's it's nice. The old school leather on the background. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the bomb right here. Now, anything catch your eye so far at CES besides all the other Blackberries? Um, it's a lot, a lot of things going on over here. Yeah. A lot, a lot of well, things going on. Well, we're here to talk about uh, the new Slot Radio, which uh, I'm sure is, is one of your favorite gadgets right now. It's Slot Radio. So tell people what Slot Radio is. Well, Slot Radio is definitely a, it's more of like a portable XM series mm -hmm. type device that you can yeah. just hold. You get your pick it, you got full control of what you want to listen to from every genre. You can just skip or you can just play it all the way through. If you don't like it, skip the next record. And you know, and it's not like, you know, it's really, it's completely different. You got full control over the music itself, you know what I mean? Now, it's like when you, you buy the device, mm -hmm. and I, I believe it's $100, and then for $40, you get a thousand songs put onto it. So it is like radio and it just plays. That's what's amazing about yeah. it. You get a thousand songs. Yeah. And your new song is on it, right? Yeah, I got a couple joints on that. Now, I, uh, I, I see, that we have this. We have this device, which is yeah, a special device. Yeah, this is, a, this is a special MP3 player. This my whole album is on it. The Freedom album is on it. And it's also on Slot Music, which is a small SD card that you can actually put into your phone. Which I hear it's like 15 bucks just for, for the documentary and a lot of your music. Yeah, you get this? a documentary, you get music, you get wallpaper, you get, I mean, you get all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I checked out your outfit. Kevin was very jealous of your tie because this is all you. I don't know if people know this, but uh, you have a clothing line. Yeah. And this is all your design. Absolutely. Now, do you have like people in Asia making your clothes or are you actually like you know you know American made and what oh some of the people some Asians are here yeah some Asians are here They're... Asians what oh, up Asians keep selling keep <laughs> selling yeah that's my family right there do you right design it are you like completely involved no I'm hands on completely hands like this on. is all the young stuff this is all made in Italy what is this but say? the convict clothing is made in Asia yeah oh nice you know give the love to Asia you can clap Asians now you should clap you should clap <laughs> that's, your, that's our family back there my family what, like there. how do you come up with your styles are you looking through different like books and coming up with stuff or is it just all in your head i think it's a, a mixture of everything you know so mm -hmm. i just like the dress when i like something i love and i you know find ways to make it to fit more you know how i like to wear it you know what i mean i definitely know what you I mean i just like to stay fresh baby you know what i'm saying <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like to stay fresh. Gotta stay fresh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much for being here, no, and thanks for uh, letting us show up all these uh, this cool stuff, you guys. This one's out absolutely. already. Uh, you gotta. This one's coming out soon. Yes, yeah, so the slot later. music. All that that technology is already out. Yeah. You know, the slot radio is coming soon. So look forward to it. Okay. Yeah. It's basically, you know, satellite radio in your hands. Thanks so absolutely. much. Let's go over to Kevin. All right, thank you guys very much. Don't forget to weigh in on our poll, you guys at home. What will be the biggest technological breakthrough in 2009? Is it the iPhone killer, wall-sized TVs, broadband everywhere, or the iPhone 3.5G? To vote, go to g4tv.com slash CES or text your answer to G4TXT. That's 44898. And remember, standard rates apply. Now, January 28th, the Chaser's War on Everything invades the U.S. It's Australia's most controversial show, and you'll only see it on G4. The Chaser team can infiltrate any situation, even W's security details. So don't miss the Chaser's War on Everything. Uh, it, it premieres January 28th. All right. Hey, I forgot to say that uh, Akon's album, Freedom, is in yes. stores now, so make sure you pick it up. Pick it up. There you go. Also, visit g4tv.com slash chasers uh, war if you guys want clips and more. Now, day one of CES is here and cannot be stopped, so don't even bother trying to stop us. We're going. That's right. It's going to happen. Plenty more cutting-edge tech to come, including a man who actually lives on the edge, Dave Matthews. Yeah. It's true. His house is on the hill. It's an Aerosmith quote, but he's <laughs> Dave Matthews. Don't go away. Thanks, guys. We're here at the portal to what some consider to be heaven on earth. I call it the Sony booth, and they've made a ton of announcements at CES. Some new lightweight notebooks, new digital cameras with capabilities that'll blow your mind, and even potentially an iPod killer. Well, we're going to show it all to you here. Back to you. CES 09 Live. It's
Fox G4's live two-day coverage of the Consumer Electronics Show. We've got tons coming up, including a look at the new wireless HDMI device from Belkin. It's awesome. And Layla Cayley with the feed, who will bring us exciting news from a mysterious place called Outside. But first, Olivia Munn. Thanks, Kev. Let's check in with Dave Matthews, who's got some Sony news for us, presented by Underworld Rise of the Lycans. All right, in its relentless quest for world domination, Sony is not only pushing the boundaries of its technology, but also the size of its booth. This is the Bio P-Series lifestyle PC. It weighs just under 1.4 pounds, has a 1.33 gigahertz CPU, two gigs of RAM, and all the wireless you'll ever need. It's got local 802.11 wireless, as well as cellular wireless on the Verizon network. On top of that, it's got built-in GPS, so it'll let you know where you are, even when you get lost. All this technology comes in at just under 900 bucks. Here we have the Sony Cybershot DSC G3 camera. Now it's got a 10 megapixel CCD, three and a half inch screen, four X optical zoom, and four gig of storage. But what really sets this apart is it's built in wireless. It has 802.11 B and G technology. It's built in wireless works to automatically upload photos to all the popular sharing sites like Flickr, Picasa, and even YouTube for videos. This camera rings in at just $499. Now there was a time when everyone had a Walkman, and the Sony X-Series just might bring that back again. This has a 3-inch touch OLED screen, so it's the latest screen technology. It plays not only your music, but also your movies, and has a really cool interface where you can flip through that content. The unit rings in at $299 for the 16 gig, or $399 for the 32 gig, and it's available this summer. All in all, impressive showing by Sony. Let's see if this gives them the tech muscle they need for 2009. Guys? Thanks, Dave. We're going to have more from Dave Matthews throughout the day. But hey, you guys are. Do you know what I hate about radios? Oh, the fact that giant media conglomerates have like an iron grip on the music that you can hear on them? Is that no. the problem with the big business? No, that they don't have Wi Fi. Oh, okay. Well, you might be interested in the new Sanyo Internet oh, Radio Clock. Look what we did there. Look, <laughs> look at what we did that. There. Look at that. We've seen all these right radios there. before, okay? But they tend to be clunky yes. and complicated to use. So yes. what makes this unique besides the whole Wi-Fi? Um, well, this could crush an assistant if you threw it at them. So it's a little <laughs> a little clunk. But the Sanyo R227 Internet Radio uses Wi-Fi, which is awesome. You do not have to be tethered uh, to a PC. So you just plug it in, uh, then break it and drop everything, <laughs> and it works just fine. No, it's cool. It plays uh, Internet Radio and podcasts. Uh, you can access thousands of stations worldwide and for your local FM stations it'll pick those up as well and the, the quality is really good. How much is it? Uh, little remote control here as well for $169.99. All right. Which is not bad at all. Okay so here's the thing is like when I wake up in the morning I, I really don't want to fuss around with controls to turn off my alarm right. so is it easy to use or is it gonna um, Yeah up? I mean in terms of I mean it's it's easy to use in terms of setting up the Wi-Fi I mean it'll automatically detect it and you're good to go. It has this retro look it's got a large dial so you can easily read uh, the important controls such as volume the, the, the you can set the alarm most important for you of course yeah. the snooze well, well so that's there. on the top. Where is it? Well, well it's it's uh, it's on the front, but it's also on the remote. So you just leave, you put the you know, the clock anywhere you want, and then you just snooze it from afar, and there you go. You go right oh. back and get your beauty okay. sleep. For, so for an alarm clock, do you think it's worth the price? Um, yeah, it all depends on how much you love internet radio. Like I listen to, there's a, a, an internet radio station, Soma.fm, and it's mm -hmm. they have this station called Groove Salad. If I could wake up every morning to that, I would actually really? stand a chance at happiness really? throughout the day. So yes, even buy. getting up and looking at this in the mirror, I might feel better about it. Well, you look really good on TV. Well, thank you. Know. Thanks, Akon. Uh, so for $170 for happiness, that would work. Uh, yeah, it would actually work. I, this is something I would totally use. And uh, you remember when they said the internet was going to kill radio? Yeah. Yeah. Now they're friends. Oh, yay. They're BFFs. Friends. They're going on first Unlike little us. rides and eating ice cream together. Oh, ice, what? ice cream makes you fat. That's what you told me. You told me not to eat it in any Well, yeah, that was for you, not for the radio. The radio's fine. All right. Well, right now, it's time to come out of our gadget haze and see what's going on in the rest of the world. Here's Layla Kaylee with the feed. Hey, this is me. This is me. Right here. Hey guys, here are your top stories for January 8th. Everyone seems to be slashing their workforce and even Google might not be immune to the economic crisis. The Goliath of search engines laid off a lot of temporary workers, but it's hard to figure out just how many of them got the boot. Google revealed that they currently have around 4,300 temps, interns and contractors. That's a far cry from the 10,000 that Google co-founder Sergey Brin said worked there in October. But since Google isn't required to report on non-employees, they're staying quiet for now. We'll keep you posted. And President-elect Barack
Barack Obama collects Spider-Man comic books, and there's one coming out that he'll definitely be picking up. Obama will meet his friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man number 583 and a five-page story arc. The story takes place in Washington, D.C. on Inauguration Day, where one of Spider-Man's foes tries his best to ruin the ceremony. And if you're a collector, you might want to pick up a few copies. The issue will have an exclusive cover featuring Obama and Spider-Man. Can't wait for that. Well, guys, that's all for now, but I want to quickly let you know about G-Cycle. G-Cycle is G4's plan to reduce e-waste. Visit gcycle.org to find out more about where to ditch your old electronics. I'm Layla Cayley, and you've just been fed. Thanks, Layla. All right, coming up, the head of a robot. I'm sorry, that's the head of iRobot. I, yeah, so iRobot. that would, uh, yes. I guess that'd be their CEO. I guess that's a person. Yes, it is. Plus, more of everything you love and need from CES, cars, computers, cell phones, and probably lots of things that don't start the letter C. Ooh, radios? No. No, it starts all. is bringing you live coverage of the biggest tech event of the year. The latest and greatest cars, TVs, MP3 players, and gadgets are making their de debut, and only G4 is bringing you behind the closed doors of the Las Vegas Convention Center to see it all. That's right. Coming up in this hour, a look at the Belkin Flywire. Mm. Can it really make you fly? No, Kevin, that's impossible. Well, if you're currently tied up in HDMI cords. Maybe. 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 Yeah. Then we're going to check out the new 9.1 megapixel Casio Ooh. excellent camera for a closer look at its enhanced video modes. Plus, we sit down for a chat with the CEO of iRobot, the next Skynet. <laughs> now, CES is far too massive for Olivia and I to tackle alone, so we have a little backup. Let's check back in with our highly trained, ready at a moment's notice floor team. First up, it's Kristen Adams. Kristen? Thanks, guys. I'll be taking you to one of the hottest events at CES, the digital experience where only the best of the best in tech are showcased. You don't want to miss it. There's a lot of amazing gadgets to check out. Over to you, Big C. What you got for us? Hey, Kristen, check this out. I found what every guy wants in his ride, night vision and satellite TV. Allison? You're looking good, Big C. I, on the other hand, I'm like Godzilla on a rampage. I am putting on my robot slippers and I am storming into the Asian pavilion. You'll get it when you see it. Back to you guys. Hey guys, just hanging out with the people. We're gonna have more of their in-depth and testing skills throughout the show. Now, in other news, Palm has finally started showing off their new cell phone operating system called WebOS, formerly codenamed Nova. The web OS operating system is in the works to power smartphones with a touch screen and full QWERTY keyboard. And Sprint does have the exclusive rise to the first phone, the Palm Pre. The Pre will come with a 3.1 inch display, Wi Fi, and a gig. Shut up! Sorry. 8 gigs of storage, among other features. Someone just died, I think. Uh, uh, yes, we can clap for them. Earlier reports say the Palm Pre will be available the first half of 2009, but no word on price just yet. Kevin? Hey, look, everybody. There was the Dave Matthews alarm. He's in the building. Uh, uh, yeah. He's in the building. Woo, uh, you good? You good, man? Oh, are we live? Yeah, we Sorry. were. We were. Sorry. We were. Wait, 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 Can we, guys, let's do it again. In that, five, that, I always four. scare the girls off, too. <laughs> it's never, never well, that's, that's the Amber Alert alarm. I mean, it lets us know. Um, all right, Dave is here. Uh, you uh, showed me this device last night, and, you, and you're, you, you seem pretty psyched for it. I think it's pretty interesting. This is the, the Belkin Flywire, right, Dave? Yep, so this is wireless HDMI. And if you think about it, HDMI is one cable to rule them all. Right. Your right? audio, so your video, all through one. Through one cable, right. But uh, half the time, if you have a flat panel on the wall, you don't want that cable snaking up through the wall to drive the beautiful display that right. you have behind you, right. right? So Belkin's come up with this. It's a 5 gigahertz wireless technology. And you put this transmitter in your rack next to your 
uh, Wii, your PS3, sure. your HD TiVo, whatever, and then you take a little receiver and you mount the receiver behind the TV on the wall. Okay. Now that seems like a, a good idea, but then you have this big power brick right. that you have to plug in as well, right? Well, theoretically, you probably had power for the TV running somewhere as well, so hopefully you could snake it through. That's right. right. So this this gets buried in your wall. Okay. And it uses 802.11, not 802.11N, but uh, a technology that's compatible. It won't screw up your 802.11N. Now, see, why would, they, why would they do that? Because I, I, I like standards. I'm like, even though it isn't completely finalized, I think 802.11, great, the fast Wi-Fi. Why did they go off and do their own thing? I think this is a consortium with a handful of companies that got together to come up with this new 5 gigahertz technology. And the reason why you wouldn't want it to run on your network is if you had a full HD 1080p signal mm -hmm. going across your network traffic, it would just bring it to a crushing halt. Right. You're not checking emails or sending IMs or yeah. torrenting hentai anymore. <laughs> you're just you're hoping and praying that that high def signal doesn't drop That's right. Out. That's right. But what, what's really neat about this, though, is all of the inputs on the back of it. Yeah. You can hook up everything here. low def, high def, even um, some of the stuff like component gets up converted to whatever your 1080 is. I was just going to ask that. So if you've got the Wii, uh, in addition to your PS3 and the 360, it'll actually take that Wii signal up, convert it in the air, That's and right. it pops out on the other end. Looking in HDMI wow. with audio. And what's really neat is one of the HDMI ports has separate audio. So if you have an older device, like you want to hook up your computer to your sure. flat panel, you can run the audio out of the computer and use a DVI to HDMI Very adapter, smart. which is like a $20 item. And, then and it'll combine the two in the stream and then yep. jack it through the HDMI. That's, right. That's great. Now, what about setup, though? Because, uh, I mean, do I, do I have to hook this up to a computer to configure it? Is no. it truly plug and play? It's truly plug and play, and it requires no pairing, like Bluetooth. It's auto pairing. Mm -hmm. And what's neat, too, is there's an SD slot on the side. So if you download new firmware for this, you can just take that firmware, put it on the same kind of memory card that your camera uses, okay. pop it in, and then upload the new firmware, and then remove the card, and then up upload the next one. Okay, so it, that sounds awesome. It sounds like it's going to declutter the living room, but are there any drawbacks? The, the drawback whatsoever? right now is cost. It's 1500 bucks for this thing. Okay, so what they're yeah. saying is a custom install would be about $3,000. So by going this route, you don't need the custom installation True. of your house. Except for the power brick that you need to hide in That's your right. wall you along with the souls of the children. Okay. Wireless power is what we're going to have that at CS 2010. Wait. Yeah, I can't. Well, we'll tease it now, and we'll <laughs> get there in 20 years. All right, next up, we have the Excite Touch Remote. This is from Acoustic Research. And I keep hearing how amazing universal remotes are going to be. I've used the Pronto, the Pronto right. Neo. I've used the Harmony One. I mean, they're okay, they're but nice. they don't... Harmony, they won the game, but it still required a geek like us to sit and hook it up yes, to your laptop, absolutely. run through the program. And I love that it was web configurable, mm -hmm. but it still was a pain. And if you switched out hardware, I can't tell back you how to many the times. Computer, back to the computer, plug it in, search for that cable. There right. you go. So, so how are they solving the problem? So here? this is built by the same company that makes most of the remote controls for your cable boxes, your satellite boxes. So they have all the codes. Oh. They have thousands of codes pre-programmed into this. So now you get it out of the box and you can go through the setup on its 2.2 inch screen. You don't have to go to the setup on the web. Now, the good news is to future proof this, it has a USB jack on the side. And you can tie in, you can update, you can um, also do some fine tweaking because some devices, you might have a delay that you want to add or sure. extra buttons. Well, when you're macroing, yeah, you want to wait for that DVD player to fire up before you click menu or whatever. Right. So, so it is future proof. So for those who are freaking out, oh, God, the codes are preloaded. I buy the latest cutting edge receiver. Theoretically, I'll be able to upload it. That's uh, right. Update. And it's got a touch screen on top and this really innovative slider method, too. So you can have multiple pages of content buried or nested within. And um, it's pretty clever, and I really like the industrial design because they you kept all of the buttons in large format, and they've backlit it. All right, so will this be at, at Casa de Dave anytime soon? Like, this is, is this something you'd recommend to people? I think so. I think because the code base is built in, this is an upgrade to the Harmony line of remote controls. And at 250 bucks, it seems like a pretty good deal. Awesome. It's well in line with those products. Very, very nice, Dave. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming on and showing off these products. None. We asked you to vote in our poll, and now we've got the results. Don't forget to weigh in. What will be the biggest technological breakthrough in 2009? The iPhone killer, wall-sized TVs, broadband everywhere, or the iPhone 3.5G? The winner with 46% of the vote is broadband everywhere, which is what I would personally vote for. Coming up, we guarantee you guys are going to want to buy at least four of the next five things we show you. Kevin. Is there, is there any broadband here? Oh, no, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Day one of CES continues. Don't go anywhere. Let's go back down. Oh, okay. The almighty iPhone has dominated the competition, reigning supreme over the cell phone landscape. But for how long? Is the next big thing about to knock it off the throne right here at CES? 
We ask the experts, and the answer is just ahead. I love Asia. Can you look at this? Look at this. It's a mouse that massages your wrist while you use it. Come on. I'm never leaving Asia. Or the Asian pavilion, at least. We keep clicking on the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ah, uh, 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 damn it. <laughs> Welcome back to CES 09 Live. This is G4's live two-day coverage of all the breaking news and insiders only exclusive. Don't forget to keep your iPod fed with G4's special CES podcast. So check out G, uh, AOTS feed at G4TV.com slash podcast. Now, you may remember the Sonos multi-room music system we reviewed in Gadgetron. I remember. Just a few minutes ago. Yes. Now, uh, this is Cisco's answer to that impressive wireless system. That's right. This is the wireless home audio system to be released under the Linksys by Cisco brand. So it's got a cute little label on it that okay. says it. <laughs> so let's break it down. What's inside yeah. this thing? Well, it's similar to the Sonos in that it's a multi-room music system. Mm -hmm. um, it uses a network base station for multiple rooms, and the base stations can play synchronized music from various music sources, and, and it plays music from networked PCs or internet radio. Right now, it supports Rhapsody theoretically by launch. There uh -huh. could be more subscription services, maybe Pandora, maybe uh, Last FM, who knows, but it does support streaming internet radio, at least from Rhapsody right now. Okay, well, how does the Cisco wireless system differ from the Sonos? Well, it, it features this large touchscreen. The Sonos if you remember, not a touch screen. It looks like it should be, but this one actually is. So you can quickly scroll through items. It Does also it work has a, pretty good? Uh, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's as responsive as you'd want a remote control well, to good. be. And it has a nice little jog wheel to also quickly scroll through as well. There you go. Now you can see my, oh, my greasy that. palms. Um, <laughs> it's completely wireless, though. The Sonos needed to have at least one hardwired bridge. And this one, you do not need to actually directly connect it to a router or anything else. This will all stream just fine. Um, it actually includes an iPod dock as well. So you're oh. good to go if you wanted to stream music from your iPod to another room. Okay, well, how customized? is this thing as far as like buying other components? Well, that's the thing. It, it's got six components that, that'll be available. Mm -hmm. they, they're offering three different prepackaged bundles, but each component is also individually available, which means, okay, let's say I want this in three different rooms. I want two remotes and I want four base stations yeah. or whatever. I can go and mix and match and create the system that I need for my house or, wow. or my studio or my closet, whatever it is. I love that. Like, that's yeah, fantastic. You can mix and match any way you want. And, and again, does not need to be hard, hardwired to anything. So you plug it in, you, you, you know, sync it up with your computer and you're good to go. Okay, so when will this be available and how much? Well, that's kind of the one questionable thing. Right now there's no price announced. Oh. And it's supposed to be available uh, by the end of January. So you think if it's coming out that soon, we didn't know. they might well, drop a well, hint to the well, price. Well, let, let's, uh, let's jump ahead a little bit and ask, yeah. like, what do you think it should be? Like, what, is, what should they be charging? A product like this, I mean, this, this not only is the base station, this is also the amp for your speakers. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know exactly the specs on the speakers. Yes. You know, so if it's a decent set of speakers, I could see this going for two, three hundred bucks. Okay. Um, if they're tinny kind of PC speakers, they got to drop it down a little bit. Yeah, or I'd recommend buying it all separately and getting a pair of speakers that, that, that you want yeah. that, that will give you the sound quality that you need. All right. Well, there you go. There it is. So there you have it. Buy it or don't. Hey, it's your call. Yeah, we can't live your life for you. So not, don't stop asking us. Not for free, at least. I mean, but... <laughs> You'll live someone's life for them? Uh, yeah, some people life coach. I will actually live your life for you. That's fantastic. Yeah, mine is boring, so give me a couple <laughs> bucks. I'll take care of yours. Yours is not boring. It's very boring. All right, Mac Fanatics, you have been waiting patiently all day. We appreciate it. It's about to pay off, everybody. Earlier this week, Apple Nation gathered in San Francisco for the annual Mac World Conference. Yeah, that's the conference that in past years launched the iPhone, the yes. iPod, and the iMac. So when can we expect to see Apple's next game-changing iDevice on store shelves? Well, here's what went down. I can't wait. Hey, I'm at the 2009 Macworld Expo. If you're a Mac head, this is definitely the place to be. This is where folks come up and show off their Apple wares. It's unbelievable. And I'd be a really sucky host if I didn't show you the coolest stuff on the floor. How do you feel about this being the last year that Apple's going to be Well, you know, he, here's what it is. Macworld has gone on for 25 years. When Apple launched, we were here. When Apple was having difficult times in the mid-90s. And Macworld's been an awesome show as the marketplace has had a resurgence. What we want is we want Apple to keep making great products, and we're going to show people how to use them and help them find other cool things to do with them. Smart Table, it's an interactive, collaborative tool. Surface and Table technologies have been around for a little while. This is the first product that's really focused towards education. You put this in a classroom, students just stand up and they know exactly what to do. It supports multiple touch, multiple users, multiple gestures. Oh, be like. They're around 8,000 US per unit. 
Pinger phone is sort of an upgrade to the native phone app on the iPhone. Each tab is a different view of your contacts. You can call them, you can text them, you can IM them, or you can email them. If you're friends with them on Facebook or Twitter or MySpace, you can send them direct messages. Them, okay. And then there's a full IM client that supports Yahoo, AIM, Twitter, and Google Talk. It's available now, it's in the iTunes store, and it's completely free. I know that nerds have been talking about this for a long time. When's Sling Media gonna launch the, the iPhone app? It's an application that streams your live TV off your digital cable set-top box, DVR, even video on demand or pay-per-view. What we're watching right now is a tape. I know this show. Yeah, a tape version of Attack of the Show coming off of my TiVo DVR. We don't have a price for it yet. Okay. And we are gonna deliver this to Apple in March. So from hardware to software, anything you need or could possibly want to be knighted, the biggest Mac nerd on the block is right here at Mac World Conference and Expo 2009. Nice. Lots of stuff there. Lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Updates to, to everything. New garage band, new iLife, new yeah. everything. Is, is, yeah. really is there thing. anything Apple can't do? Um, I, you know, I don't know. They can teach you how to play songs, apparently. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, we talked about this the other day on the show, briefly, on Tack of the Show. Mm -hmm. It's $5. You get to, like, you get the, the song and download, like, Sting teaching you how yes. to play it. Sarah McLaughlin, <laughs> huh? Hey. Yeah! I just want to learn how to play Angel so my pets can be sad, like Aww. that commercial she's in all the well, time. Yeah, she is in that commercial. <laughs> but is that, I mean, you love learning. You play uh, the drums. Would you pay $5 yeah. well, to have it, somebody teach you how to... I mean, look, it's cool that they're getting the actual musicians on board, and, and I have to, I have to get hands on with it to really yeah. see. But, but so far, it looks like they're just kind of lighting up notes on the on the guitar and yeah. on the keyboard and saying, "Push these now." So I don't know how, how much of a tutorial it will actually be, but well, I, I don't want to make a snap judgment, but I'm about to because Go for it. the other day on our show, you, but it just looked like Sarah McLaughlin just sitting. I'm going to teach you guys how yeah. to play my song. Like, they're so depressed when they were doing thanks it. Thanks for the $5. <laughs> yeah. so Here's a chord. You're gonna yeah, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so, no I wonder mean, my pets it, it are sad. Just, <laughs> it's interesting to see what people do. But big news, iTunes, DRM. Finally, it was my right? biggest gripe. I, you know, I'm, I was tired of Apple locking people out. I know it wasn't exactly entirely their decision, but I'm sure it didn't hurt sales of iPods. Okay, so, so well, what do you think about this? They say now it's your, your music can be DRM free, yeah. but they charge you 30 cents to unlock it. Yeah, it's you, like you've so already you, purchased the song. Yeah. Now you got to pay an additional 30 cents. It's like yeah. getting a gift for Christmas and then paying extra to unlock the gift <laughs> yeah, and, and use it. I think it's it's a little lame, but I think it's great that we're moving towards DRM There's free for now. music. Yeah, I'm glad it's happening. If they could only make the iPhone cut and paste and not crash every three calls, <laughs> then I'd be happy. How about make phone calls? That would be great, too. Yeah. Coming up, you guys, CES 09 Live continues. If you need a new anything, you're going to want to stick around. I'll do anything. We will be showing you the best one out there. It has everything. We have the latest anything. Yeah. So right now, we're giving companies 30 seconds to cut through the clutter and hit us with their best product pitch. So time to shine, guys. Good luck. Hey guys, I'm here with Ryan at the Samsung booth and he's showing me the P3. I gotta catch a plane, you gotta sell it to me before I go. Let's go. Man, this thing's awesome. It's got music, movies, it's Bluetooth enabled so you can par it with your cell phone and answer calls on it. Not only that is you can uh, par it to your Bluetooth headset or to your vehicle. Uh, it's got haptic touch so you can, when you touch it, you know what you're checking on the screen because it vibrates every time you hit it. It's a pretty cool unit and you need to get one, man. All right. As long as I know it's vibrating because I'm touching it, that means I'm not doing something silly. You saw me. Some of these green products you see just seem gimmicky. Do you think green technology is actually having a major impact on tech, or is it just bad? Okay, well, it was a fab, and now it's becoming a reality. Yeah, it's actually happening. It seemed like a, like a cool bullet point for companies to put on their press releases, yeah. but now it's finally arriving in the living room and probably saving consumers money. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Yeah, right? absolutely. No. Now, um, Samsung LED HD TV using lower power consumption and the new MacBooks yes. using similar screen tech and bodies that can be recycled. Yes, so that's yes. A good pure thing. aluminum body recycled. Yes. It's a great thing. And now Mitsubishi has a low wattage laser TV. I actually saw it last night at you the did. digital experience. Yeah, it runs around 95 watts versus like 300 watts. So that's over time, it's going to save you a lot of money. Do the math, on that. Do the math on that, Pereira. What, uh, 270,000? <laughs> no. I don't know what you, what are we really. talking, what, I don't. What the difference was. Oh, I didn't know. I was going for savings <laughs> over time. Okay, good. In euros. Good. <laughs> All right, you guys. 
If you haven't noticed, we are welcoming you back to the yeah! Tech. Come on, see there's some tech around us. Event that is only on G4. Now, as we just mentioned, being green is becoming part of everyday life. Not really using math, but being green is part of right. your everyday life. Sure, you separate your trash, but you can do more starting by buying some green tech. Now, the Greener Gadgets Tech Zone has all of the latest energy-saving, mercury-free gadgets at CES, and Kristen Adams is there right now. Kristen? Hey, guys, I'm standing here in Green Central. This year, CES is all about the environment, and I'm here to show you why green is still the hottest color in 09. friendly shopping bag here to find some green products and one of the first things that caught my eye is the area wear magno am fm radio with short wave what makes this radio really cool is that it's handcrafted in indonesia from sustainable wood so it puts a green spin on a tech product which i really really like and it also gives the communities there some much needed work so they can preserve this timeless art of handcrafting it retails for 250 dollars and is available right now wondering why I'm holding this lamp. Well, it's because I'm about to play with my toys. That's right. Check it out. This is a six-in-one solar kit from a company called Owie Kit. It's a really cool way to not just play with your toys, but to teach kids about solar energy. So if I just shine my light on these guys, they all wake up. It's like an erector set for the future. This guy's one of my favorites. Aww, isn't he cute? So if you put these things outside, they would run until the sun goes down, just for $19.95. is one of the most greenest and tiring activities you can do. So to make it easier on all of us, Schwinn and Toshiba have teamed up to bring us the Schwinn Tailwind powered by a Toshiba SCIB battery. It's the world's fastest charging electric bike. It takes only 30 minutes to charge. It retails at $3,200, which is comparable to a Vespa or a scooter and looks a lot cooler. It's an assisted pedal, so you just get it going and then you feel the power kick in. It's got eight speeds, so let's test it out. Well, my eco bag is full of eco gadgets. Who said hippies can't be techno geeks? There's hope for the future yet. Let's see what's happening on stage. Thanks so much, Kristen. And remember, everyone, if you take one thing away from CES, it is this. Leave only footprints. Wait, wait, or is it leave no footprints? I know there's something about carbon in there. Wait, does any Kevin, okay, is no, it no, leave no, you're fine. You're fine. You're, it's you don't great. want to leave a it's footprint. Great. It's carbon. Don't don't leave, leave vacuum. It. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Don't leave the footprint. Dave Matthews, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Yeah, thank you. We're going to show us the uh, the ins and outs of something called the old pogo plug. This is this is pure it's sexy beautiful. right here. It's beautiful. It's apple white. Ooh. So essentially, the pogo plug is the sling box for files. Now think about it. How many USB drives have you alone bought in the last year? Uh, I can't remember how many I've lost, uh, but I think I, I think I've bought probably at least at least twelve. Yeah. All right. So well, thumb drives and USB like hard yeah. drives. Right. Yeah. Um, I just bought some new terabyte drives. And when yeah. you buy those drives, you can only hook them up to one computer. One computer, right? Right. So the idea with Pogo Plug is you plug this in the wall. It's super easy to mm -hmm. install. You then it gets power. It just hangs on the wall if you wanted sure. to. You plug it into a USB drive. Any drive will work, even thumb drives. And then you plug it into Ethernet as well. And the Ethernet gives it a connection onto your LAN, your local area network. Mm -hmm. So now all the files that sat on that hard drive can now be seen throughout the whole network. So it's a, wow. essentially a server in a box. So USB 2.0. That's right. Okay, so any any standard drive I plug in, it's going to go call all the files, that have the index, fire yeah, it up, know sure. how to seek them, and it's going to serve them. Yep, it serves them to Macs and PCs on the LAN, and you can just browse them. So that means you can put your media collection on it. You can do it for backups. But that's not where it ends, though. Well, that's what I mean, because you said it's the sling, sling box. And I'm like, well, I know slinging from TV to TV within your house, okay, I get it. But it's all about the, the cloud. It's that's all about right. getting your files off the Internet. So I'm assuming this thing also works that way. Yep. So as Slingbox would let you tap into your house to watch your TV, the Pogo plug lets you tap into your house from a web page. So anywhere you are with an Internet connection, you can go to a website, mm -hmm. keyinmy.pogoplug.com, key in your username and password, and then you can access all of your files through the web. Okay, so now internally on the LAN scenario, that little setting we had going, I get it. It seems Much simple. Much faster. Seems yes, but if backup. I'm over the web, like I'm, I'm now freaking out about configurations. I'm worried about firewalls for security. Do I have to open up ports in my router? This no. is sitting behind my router. Not so. at all. So what's nice about this is it makes a connection. It does the request through your firewall. So you don't have to configure anything. You don't have to make any security changes whatsoever. The Pogo plug does all that through the web portal. So all of that, um, what could be seen as a security vulnerability, right? 
is, uh, is actually uh, it, it's all, it's all gone. Wow. It's all, all right. So so when does something like this come out? I mean, here it is. This is this final design here. Yeah, final design. It looks beautiful. I love the little shiny yeah. aspect of it. It comes out in March, but right now they're doing a special. You can get it for seventy nine dollars ahead of time. And uh, $99 once it officially launches. Cool. And, and you, you pay once for the device. Is there any fee for the website to create an account and connect over no, time? No monthly fees for this at all. You can also give your friends access to your files if you right. want. And they can get into it. And you'll Can I make this. separate accounts on the website so they can log in? Absolutely. So I don't have to give my master account? Absolutely. Very uh, smart. The favorite part for you, though, it has an iPhone application, too. So wow. now you can tap into it from the touchscreen iPhone and get access to all that content as well. Very cool. That, so that's great. So so introductory offer is again how much? Seventy nine bucks. Seventy nine so bucks. Uh, cheap product. Grab this iPhone compatible. Uh, uh, assuming down the road they might make an Android app, something that runs on the new Nokia uh, OS, like it could and work anywhere. You know, applications for Mac and PC. So when you're remote, you can VPN essentially without all that cumbersome VPNing and all that setup. So my Pogo plug does it for you automatically. I have been sold, sir. Well done. All right. Well done, you. Mr. Matthews. Thanks, Dave. Right now let's go to Olivia, who's got another kind of. A personal tech. Now, one of the new advances on display at CES this year is personal beauty tech. If you're looking for a futuristic way to make yourself more attractive, CES is a good place to start. Sometimes. Harnessing the power of electricity, the all-new Rejuvenation Mask delivers amazing beautification results by sending electromagnetic pulses directly to the skin pores. But don't take our word for it. See the amazing results for yourself. everyone take a seat have a seat yeah there's an empty seat right here oh wow thank you thank you so much for coming to witness the new dawn of the rejuvenation mask at this time i'd like to ask any volunteers anybody sir you sir yeah would you like to volunteer uh, come on up sure why not? come on up big round of applause for our volunteer uh, but first i should ask you this sir are you ready to be beautiful <laughs> well it's not like i'm ugly Okay, sure. All right, just slip the mask on. It slides very gently over your face. Very comfortable and fits snugly right there. How do you feel, sir? Feel okay? Okay, well, at this point, you're going to begin to feel a warming sensation. Uh, yeah, I feel, feel something. It's a little, it's a little tingly. It's, uh, it's okay. I... Oh, okay. Um, uh, it's actually starting to hurt a little bit. If we could, let's just take it off. Okay, just take it off. Stay calm. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, don't move it. Oh, it's stuck. Yeah. Okay, just stay calm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, just relax. Everything's fine. Get the axe. Oh, no, 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 no. This man is dead. What have you done? What in God's name have you done? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I bet. This is the most beautiful dead person you have ever seen. <laughs> the all-new Rejuvenation Mask. May cause flu-like symptoms, spontaneous vomiting, ocular bleeding, sphincter inversion, typhoid, sleep crime, anthropomorphic menstruation, permanent death, and in one case, a state of paralysis where the user remained conscious while being buried alive. Well, I, I, guess, uh, I guess no press is, is, is bad press, right? Yeah. 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 Hey, coming up, we talked to iRobot CEO Colin Engel. I just found out he has nothing to do with the Will Smith movie, so <laughs> he's off the hook. Don't worry. Plus, we'll gather up some of the best and most unusual tech from the East. And our first installment of it came from Asia. Don't miss it. Welcome back to CES 09 Live, GeForce coverage of the Consumer Electronics Show. For two days, we're going to bring you an insider's perspective of the next wave of tech to wash over the nation. Sounds refreshing, right? It should. Right now, it's time to talk tech with one of the industry's heavyweights, a man who probably has his scientists working on a prototype of the Iron Man suit as we speak. It's iRobot CEO Colin Angle. But first, let's take a, look at, a closer look at the company.
by robot. First, they invaded your home with the Roomba, every lazy man's fantasy come true. Then the company started designing bomb defusing bots and other super high-tech military machines. Kind of makes you think twice about leaving that Roomba home alone. Joining me now for C uh, joining me now, CEO of iRobot, Colin Engel is here. Colin, how are you, sir? Pleasure to have you here. I, I, I love your products. I love Thank them you. to death. I don't know how I get one of the military bots to deal with pests in my backyard, but I want one. Well, if it, possible. Not everyone has a terrorist problem in their backyard. Well, no, if but you do, those rats are bad. I'm telling you. Um, what's what's new for iRobot this year at, at CES? What are you guys showing off? Well, we've got uh, the new version of our gutter cleaning robot. Okay, I thought I was worried that might be a pro. Well, you know. Nature, but it's, but for the gutters, for yes. For the gutters, nope. You put it in the gutter, and uh, you turn it on, and it drives forward and uh, ejects <laughs> all of the debris yeah. in the gutter. So I'm telling you, you bring that right over to AEE, and you have pre-orders, <laughs> my friend. It's going to happen. Yeah. So, wait, so it's actually sort of remote controlled there, and, right. and, and you can have it go forward and backward, and it'll right. take so everything out of the gutter. Right, so you put it in the gutter, and you can like watch it go down, and, and making clean your gutter is kind of fun. Now, I mean, I, I know you guys are, are, you're heavily into the military tech. Was yes. this was this spawned out of any any applications that you're making for, for the military? Well, the tracks here are actually off our military robots. We've scaled them down and figured out, you know, how to get, how do you awesome. drive a robot down a, down a gutter? And it's like, well, tracks do it pretty well. We know how to build tracks, so it's crossover technology. So this is a, a big deal for, for many families that are reluctant to get ladders and get up there and do any heavy lifting. Uh, Absolutely. Have, have you announced a price or release date for this guy yet? It's uh, on sale 129. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So cool. So congrats on that. What about the Roomba? Like, I, I love my Roomba. I hate to admit it. I've actually <laughs> talked to my Roomba while brushing my teeth. Like, it hit me once, oh, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologized oh, it's to the vacuum. But yeah, I know it has feelings uh, and brushes that I clean. But what, what's what's new in this iRobot here? Or this so, uh, Roomba here? So this is the Roomba 560. It's our top model. And um, you put it on the ground. It has a docking station. So really, this lives in your house. Right. You tell it when you want it to turn on. It comes out every day, cleans, goes back, plugs in, recharges itself. It can handle carpets with fringe on this side. It can handle uh, wires on the floor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a practical robot. Can it handle house pets, or does it suck them right into it as well, tail first? Well, uh, very, very few I want that model. Of pets have, uh, have but no, this guy can it. actually handle pet hair, right? Like it can, uh, it absolutely. Can do it all. So, so it picks up the pet hair, and actually there's the great YouTube videos of pets riding on it. it it's a new I've seen that. We tried to recreate that in studio, but it was too much to, to create a Roomba that I could ride. Yes. Well. Um, but all right, so so if we could do the demo thing, like I hate to get sham wow on you, but I would love to for people to see that this, this guy actually works. Absolutely. Let's okay. go over here. What do we got? We have, uh, let's see, some Doritos. Oh, not our perfectly yes, carpet. Yes, yes. How I'm dare you soil I'm this? I'm going to stool it and no, stuff on it. Yes. No. This is, this is, look, you're upsetting the masses, Colin. Clearly okay. this, right. this Roomba is not, whoa. Look at him go. And so, and so it goes. And what's the, what's the algorithm? What's the method here? Because I notice my Roomba sort of goes in circles for a little while, then right. figures out where it needs to go, and then starts picking things up. So it's in spot mode right now. So it, it assumes that you put it down in the middle of a mess. Right. And then it's going to go around in a ever-growing circle until it has successfully... Until it consumes everything and, and kills a cameraman. There you go. Look at it go. This is, this is great. And, and again, you can schedule this to go on any day at any time, and it'll just, it'll just do it. Absolutely. Wow. Um, all right. Uh, Colin, I have to ask, when when are you guys officially changing your name to Skynet? Is that, <laughs> well, is that going to happen now in 2012? I'm sorry, buddy. Go clean, clean. See, you're, you're upsetting the Go robot free. talking about Skynet. I, I love so it. Far. I'm setting it free. No, I mean, you guys, I mean, what, what are your plans for the future? I mean, obviously, you're still doing the military stuff, uh, right? you know, and, and you're doing the home stuff. W what's next? I mean, we've got gutters. We've got carpets. Well, the... the uh What's next is we don't stop until you come home, your house is totally taken care of, you sit back and you do what you want to do as opposed to maintaining your home. Right. And so that, you know, we've got, you know, I, I want to get a robot to fold my laundry because I yes. don't particularly. Yes, and ironing too, if you can throw that uh, in ironing there, Ironing is good. Set. But so, you know, it's easy to make a list and we're just going to keep knocking down these dull, dirty, drudgery, right. uh, you know, Are you guys working on an ironing bot? Like, can you... Well, Can we a little ironing, ironing, ironing requires manipulation, and we're certainly working on how do you make uh, a, an artificially intelligent arm that's cost-effective, that right. can go off and, and move around. Right now, the first applications for our robot mm -hmm. arms are on our military side, where we've got our, our bomb disposal robots reaching right, out. Right, grabbing, and, taking the sensitive stuff. And, and defusing and the bombs. Defusing it, yeah, saving lives, which is more important than getting my pleats right, I guess. Uh, I'll Most give it days, that, yeah. yeah. Um, now, you know, I, I, you say you're working on these arms, or maybe, maybe trying to work on an ironing bot, but... So many people have hacked the Roomba. Yes. I, I'm, I'm waiting for them to, to figure out how to make this thing iron. Like, as, as a creator, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's your company, it's your baby, are you happy, or do you get a little worried when people start 
hacking this thing and making it do maybe what it's not supposed to do or intended you know, to do. We're a company that was started by people who loved hacking and building and so forth. So we've actually published how to hack the robot. You take the cover off that, you expose right. the serial port, you can plug whatever you want, you can reprogram this, and so we love it. And, and so you're not going after people actively and, and no, trying to shut anybody down, you guys support it. We have a contest. We actually have a, a version of the Roomba called the Create, which is a, a special hackable Roomba where we took out the cleaning engine and just put a place to plug stuff and in. There you go. And people have made that robot get a beer out of her fridge. We had <laughs> one group that uh, dressed it up like a frog. Okay, I don't need to. I, they were from Japan, they right? Were, they were. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Colin, always a pleasure. Thank you for making and subsequently yeah. cleaning up a mess on our floor. Can we sprinkle some more Doritos down though as oh, we go out? Absolutely. Let's do that. Olivia! You don't stop no, me no. when he talks about people dressed as frogs. I want to hear the end of that story. Olivia, okay. there's a mess. I know. Oh, Mumba. Oh. What? I just thought you might want to. It's fine. Let's check <laughs> in with the stop laughing. Let's check in with the only critics who count. It's the virtual audience. All right, let's talk to Mike from Texas first. Mike, if you could have a robot at your disposal, all right, what would you have it do? And now, is there anything that you wouldn't want it to do? Well, I'd want it to talk in the voice of Patrick Stewart and oh, make me buy an ice cream whenever I wanted to. Oh, we just switched guys. Which one was talking? An ice cream bot? Uh, they're, they're all frozen. Uh, ice cream bot would be kind of cool. An ice cream bot. I'd be down for that. Yeah, what if would you... it talk like Patrick Stewart? I, I, I love what he was saying. I want something to come in and just do everything. Well, don't I'm we glad all. they don't yeah. stop and don't yeah. stop to you're not, You're not worried at all about having robots uh, running, running wild throughout your house while you're gone? Not really. Yeah, me neither. No, no I'm no. totally okay with it. The, the upside is, is better. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. Ruin things as long as they're clean. <laughs> Next, let's hear from Matt from New York. Uh, Matt, there's been a lot of talk about artificial intelligence for a long time. Um, you know, we were just talking about maybe an artificial AI bot that could iron or figure out how to mm -hmm. fold things. Do you think it's something that would be cool, or, again, is it something that we should fear? Oh, uh, you should definitely fear it. Have you ever seen Terminator? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have, That's a movie. Yeah. I know, but... I was uh, more scared by a naked Arnold Schwarzenegger than I was by the notion <laughs> of him being artificially intelligent. If a naked Arnold Schwarzenegger would be folding my laundry, <laughs> then be okay he could it. be naked. It's fine. Even now? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, a little. If he's folding laundry, I little. save 120 bucks a week. Well, That's how much I made. Wow. Well the done. Made's expensive. Yeah, apparently. Wish you had the same made, by the way. Yeah. All right, now let's go to uh, Paul from Ohio. How much would you spend on a personal robot? I would give my little sister away if I had one. Uh, <laughs> All right, now ballpark well, figure. How much is that little sister yeah, worth? I mean, does she have any talents? Could she? Uh, can Kevin, she paint? Ke I... Careful. There's it would be care. like. Um, annoying little sister for a robot who cleans my carpet. That's like a win-win. That is a win-win. Right. I don't think that you own your sister, so technically yeah. I don't think you could. No, you could, could maybe get a job and go to Bed Bath and & Beyond and get a Roomba. But that's Ke fine Kevin, if you get this carpet clean. How much would you spend? Uh, for what? For a for, robot? For a robot? I mean, it depends. I bought the Roomba. I'd spend a couple hundred bucks on something that could what iron. What is fully and, working like we just talked about? Like, like, like Rosie? Like it everything. And yeah. it was like Rosie, Rosie. thousands. I would really? trade my real doll for a Rosie. What? <laughs> oh, my God. You should be at AEE right now with that kind of Use Used real dolls friend. don't really hold their value, by the way. All right, the thanks, guys. Thanks I'm for just the saying. audience. Great job, as you always. You can oxy-clean it all you want, but that power of oxygen is not enough for the all power right. of fortune. <clears throat> oh, it's, uh, if it's on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, by the way. Almost weekly, yes. Heroes is back. Heroes is back. And in case you missed any of this season so far, you can catch up on the greatest moments with a 13-hour marathon of back-to-back -back episodes January 31st. And prepare yourself for all new episodes as Heroes returns to G4 Tuesdays this February. So check out G4TV.com slash Heroes for details. By the way, the carpet is totally clean. Thank you, Roomba. Coming up, more of the latest gadgets and gear. In fact, go ahead and throw out everything you own right now because it's just going to depress you yeah. when you see what we have coming up. Plus, get the latest. CES news, videos, photos, and more at g4tv.com slash CES. We're going to be right back, everybody. Yes. Tomorrow's G4 live coverage of CES continues with more TVs, computers, cell phones, and MP3 players. Thinner, bigger, and better than you dreamed possible. Everybody's favorite globe-trotting billionaire, Mark Cuban, will be live on stage. And oh yeah, an actual robot invasion. Don't miss it. How has the economic depression affected CES? 
and what kind of gets their immune to the depression. Well, I think answering the latter part first, we'll, we'll rewind this memento style, we'll Tarantino it. Um, I, I don't think any gadget's immune. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, people will eventually start tapering back on cell phone purchases mm -hmm. and digital media purchases. So I don't think anything's immune, but I think the, the downturn has affected CES this year. Well, yeah, attendance is down this year. Some companies are doing suites versus being right here yeah. on the floor with us, since yeah. that saves us money. I mean, some people are saying that the televisions that offer internet connectivity, that that should be immune. Yeah. Um, again, I... If, if you're if you're crunched, if you're having trouble yeah. paying the mortgage, you're probably not upgrading your TV. Well, but if you're buying a new TV, you're probably buying one with those features because yeah. well, why not if they're going to have them? But also there's like a there's Hulu and YouTube and all those other kind of places where you can go and watch stuff so that you know cuts down on expensive cable. True, bills. true. So, so maybe yeah, get the TV with those features and yeah. and, and, and cut out the uh, cable and satellite except for the ones man. that carry G4. Yeah, you're gonna we would never want to lose that. You're gonna want uh, that. I'm fired. No, you're not. I, I control your, oh. your, your destiny. Thank you. Thanks the for keeping standard. me on. Right now, Olivia is about to get her camera on. That's right. Cutting through the thousands of products here to figure out what you want and need is an almost impossible job. So we've decided to make things easier. Here are your top three hottest cameras. Up first is the Pentax P70. This 12 megapixel camera takes high resolution pictures with a four time optical zoom lens and even shoots video in high def. But this camera from the future also includes smile recognition software and easy to use auto picture mode that selects one of eight shooting modes for taking snapshots and triple anti-shake protection so you wind up with sharp shots even if you've got the uh, coffee jitters. Now this one hit stores in February with an affordable $200 price tag. If you want front row seats to a venue but can't afford those scalper prices, check out the Olympus SP590 Ultra Zoom. This camera has a 26 time optical zoom lens, making it the most powerful point and shoot zoom lens on the market right now. And dare I say, the world. Plus, with dual image stabilization, your pictures will be as sharp as if you were standing right in front of your subject. 500 bucks for stalkers in training and the nosebleed prone. And finally, we have a new challenger to the flip. The Sony Webby HD MHS PM1 MPEG-4 camera. Very catchy, by the way, guys. This is a four ounce video and still camera with a vertical body that is pocket perfect to take anywhere. The swiveling lens on the Webby makes taking profile pictures easier than ever. Storage size and price are not yet available, but look for this ultra portable HD camera in three snazzy colors this spring. What colors would you want? Oh God, fuchsia. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, but what, what are product names? Like I don't 13 letters, a dash, 400 numbers, and then uh, The blade, uh, the flip, that's easy to remember. Those make sense. Yeah. I like the, the, the PDX2 2012 HD <laughs> 4. Really? Have you seen the ZX53825.56? You know, the it? .6 sold me. That's the one that really did it. Uh, that, that's how you know it's newer. Believe it or not, and, and I, I want to I yeah. move on here. Believe it or not, It Came From Asia is not an Olivia Munn documentary. <laughs> uh, I made that mistake myself, uh, but Netflix took it back, so it's fine. <laughs> it's actually uh, our look at the cutting edge tech soon to be making its way over from the far, far east. You know, now that I think about it, I don't see why it can't be both those things. I mean, the world does need more Olivia documentaries, more than it really needs a back scratcher that runs on panda blood. Yeah, you can clap, Asian kind of white man back there. Let's check in with Allison, who's got the latest. Allison. Hey guys, I'm here at the Asian Pavilion. We're taking a break to check out some of the newest and weirdest stuff coming out of Asia. I mean, CES isn't just about HD, OLED, DVD, KFC, whatever. It's also about the fun stuff, like these. Uh, now, I know we're all preparing for the robot revolution. This way, you can join them, because every step you take makes a robot noise. Well, these are a blast. If you want some, get them from the Gundam Company. Let's go see what else the Asian Pavilion has, shall we? All right, Robo Slippers are fun, but how about a Bandai Poking Box? I know, Poking Box sounds like something you'd see on the AEE special, but it's actually this trippy little game you got right here where you stick your finger in the hole and you get to bat around the little guy. This is the funnest box I have ever poked, but I'm running out of time. Let's see what else is here. All right, check this out. This is not for the colorblind. It is the Luxium Luxie keyboard. And it's to give your keyboard um, maybe a little personality. It's got 430 LED lights in it. You can program the screen to say numbers, names, whatever you want. G4, maybe, for instance. 
They're even making models where the keys will vibrate to the rhythm of the music your computer is playing. You can pick one up from anywhere from 149 bucks to 199 bucks, and uh, give your desktop a little pizzazz. Well, there you go. That's just some of the things coming at you from the Asian Pavilion. I think I'm going to go storm the rest of it with my Robo Slippers. Back to you guys. Thanks, Allison. Those slippers, if they had the screens of thousands, I would purchase. Back with us now, though, is tech expert Dave Matthews with another gadget from the future. Future, <laughs> the future. All right, what do we have here? This the is Echo Star VIP yeah. 922. 922. So a year ago. I have ago. the 722. Okay. So oh, okay. I'm psyched for this. So that's upgrade. like a 400 gig hard drive, you know, DDR 500. Yeah. 500 yeah. yeah. So this has a terabyte hard drive. And it has Slingbox built right yes, into there it. There we go. Now we're talking. So Echo Star bought Sling Media a little over a year ago, and they added all the functionality of the Slingbox right into it. And what's really cool is if you have an Ethernet jack in your living room, a few geeks like us already do, that's cool because it'll pipe right into your router. But if not, you can use the power wire that goes into the back of the 922, mm -hmm. and it has home plug technology back in. So it sends the Ethernets over the power wires to your router in the other room. And that technology, you've told me, actually works now. It like works. It totally it's, works. Yeah, it's it's going to work just fine. It's solid. There's, you know, 92% effective rate, right. so sometimes you uh, have some issues. I'll take it, though. That's, yep. that's, that's more than fine. So uh, is this the first? This is the first integrated DVR and receiver with Slingbox? That's right. All in one. Typically, in one. you'd have to have multiple boxes, everything configured, your home plug adapter, your Slingbox, et cetera. But this stuff is all put together in right. one. And what I love is brand new interface. And the first thing I saw on the remote when I was checking out the Dish Network booth was no buttons. Right. There's Check no. I mean, there's, there's a handful of them, but you don't. Yeah. You're missing your, your your channel buttons. That's what's cool. So you've got the play, the pause, the quick rewind. Sure. But it has this really cool kind of like a touchpad that you'd have on your notebook, and you can scroll channel up down. You can recall left right, and you use this on screen UI. And look at the backside. It's got a trigger. Right. So if you've ever used a Wemo, right. you know you just it press the index finger, and there you go. You're not searching for the That's OK right. button. And what I love is there's actually a cursor on the guy. So you can scroll around, select the widgets you want. There's yep. no fumbling for up, down, left, That's right. right. Speaking of guide, though, check this out. This is fully web integrated as well. So you can go to sling.com. You can set up the EPG, see it all on the web, tell it to record shows, oh, and it's instant. Nice. You don't have to wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes like some of the competitors. It shows up instantly and then automatically tells the box to record what you're watching. That is awesome. Now, even better takes it one step further, it'll show you the programming that's going on on the box when you're on the website. You can be in Tahiti telling this thing to record a show, and as and you're telling it to there. record, you're watching the show that's right. coming in. Forget enjoying Tahiti, watch Tag of the Show right. when you're there. Wait, but can wait, we, there's more. Oh, what, we're throwing in a, a free car alarm? You know, what's cool about Slingbox is you can sling outside of the house, right. but you can also sling inside of the house. So they're going to have a little sling tablet, an LCD display that's high def. Okay. You'll be able to run around the house. So this is essentially an HD sling box. I'm already a terabyte like, DVR. How much would you pay? I'm already for this? Saying, I would three easy payments. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean I'm already set, but I, I want to very quickly because we're almost out of time. I got to get to this here. I mean, people forget that you know sling for mobile devices is everywhere now. It's on the BlackBerry Fold. Right. It's on every BlackBerry. Right, you got so, it on your trios. But this guy right here, yep. iPhone app. Yep, iPhone app's very cool. So check this out. I just touch it once, uh, and I get a little ghost of the on-screen display. Yeah. Um, this is just so Wait, cool. Wait, does it come preloaded? with that sexy wow look at that Cause, how could because i would pay how extra could for TV that be any better than us <laughs> what is this box coming out when the can, box when is out in a few months 200 bucks on top of whatever your dish subscription is awesome. so and no additional fees for the sling no features fees. oh i love yeah. it i love it and i Let's can't wait for the this. iphone app all right i'm taking this one dave thank you very much you. again miss mun all right it just occurred to me there might might be something going on in the world right now that has nothing to do with gear or gadgets so why don't we find out? Let's start over to Layla Kaylee and the feed. She's got news about things that aren't made of shiny metal. Hey guys, take all your top stories for January 8th. Iron Man 2 may end up being ram tough. That's right, Mickey Rourke star the critically acclaimed film The Wrestler is in talks to play a villain in the upcoming sequel, but it's not clear which baddie he'll play. Some people say he might take on the character Whiplash, but others say he'll play Crimson Dynamo. Meanwhile, Sam Rockwell may join cast members Don Cheadle and Gwyneth Paltrow to play Tony Stark's rival, billionaire Justin Hammer. But Marvel is staying mum about the script, so we'll have to wait and see. Iron Man 2 comes out on May 6th.
27th of 2010. And the next time you fall off your skateboard or bike, you should play Tetris immediately. Scientists at Oxford University in England say that dropping and stacking those colored shapes helps people deal with head trauma. And if you're wondering why Tetris is helpful and not say Fallout 3, it's because you use a bigger part of your brain to play, and that's a part of your brain that stores painful memories. But here's the bad news. You have to run home and play Tetris immediately after your entry, which means no waiting around for 911 or hospital trips. It's crazy here, guys. And that's it for now, but I want to quickly let you know about G-Cycle. G-Cycle is G4's plan to reduce e-waste. Visit gcycle.org to find out more about where to ditch your old electronics. I'm Layla Cayley, and you've just been fed. We go down and up. Time for another poll. Let us know what you think the best mobile operating system is. Is it Android OS X for the iPhone, BlackBerry OS 4, or Windows Mobile? Hey, we had to put it on there. Hey, to what? vote, go to g4tv.com slash CES, or text your answer to g4txt, that's 44898. Standard rates do apply. Kevin, what are the standard non -biased rates? Non-biased poll, non-biased poll. Oh, it oh, depends it? on what that was drawn. Typically $17 to $27 That's per text. That's not true. Coming up, OLEDs everywhere. everywhere. And they look amazing. Find out how this new tech is going to make that HD TV you just bought look like garbage. Garbage, I tell what? you. Garbage. Plus, who can kill the mighty iPhone? Anyone? Anything? We're going to ask you. I can slay the iPhone. <laughs> There's a Ford car. I love singing songs. I hope you do it at home. Great. <laughs> Welcome back to the beating mechanical heart of the tech robots giant monkey world. What? It makes sense at home. <laughs> CES 09 Live. Yes, believe me, the heart is way nicer than some of the other parts of that robot. Of the giant, the giant robot, robot monkey, monkey world. Thing you said. Yeah. Alright, you guys, do not forget, you can see all the best CES clips anytime, anywhere. Where, Kevin? We'll right answer on that for you. It's right on your mobile phone. More info is available at g4tv.com. G I got this. Okay. Slash mobile. g4tv.com slash mobile. Coming up in this I hour. Got this. In this? I'm just kidding. A visit to the Dolby booth where we'll see a cell phone with the deepest base a phone has ever had. Wow. Yeah. Then we kick the tires off the hot new cars of CES, including ones with built-in night vision and satellite TV. Plus, we'll round up the best personal audio systems like the Psycho 5.1 directional audio headphones. It's like wearing a home theater system on your head, which is hard. Is, is, Believe me, I've duct taped some Harman Kardon speakers <laughs> around there before. Is, is that really a They always slip to off. Do? Yeah, it's really totally safe. fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, though, I miss, I miss my old Polaroid camera. Really? Yeah, I do. We're right next to the ADT booth, oh so they're gosh. constantly monitoring things you're fine. Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah. The drunk coming to get you? I didn't think there needed to be an LED, I maybe an LCD screen in a trunk. I just shot the guy. <laughs> oh, like, this nice. is dumb. Kill. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by so. the way, I went. I try to buy as many Polaroid, as much Polaroid film as I can. You cornered the market. I love my Polaroid camera, and I'm yeah. so pissed that they don't make the film anymore. But thankfully, Mr. Hardwick is here with some very good news for me, I'm hoping. Oh, okay. Okay. Why not? Uh, this is an amazing camera right here. This is the the Zinc, Z the Zinc Zio Zinc. Yeah. The Zinc Zio Zinc, the Tomy Zio Zinc camera. Uh, it has a built-in printer, and I'm gonna print one out right now. No, for you're you guys. not. No, you're not, no, Chris. You're not. How are you gonna it's do that? It's impossible. How Wait can you a do minute. That? No. You have to connect it to a printer. How does that work, no. Chris? Well, Come it's on. already connected to a printer, uh, Kev. The Tomy Zio Zinc camera is 5.0 megapixel prints, 5 points by 7 full color prints, using an inkless printing system. What? How does that work? You say. I know. That's what well, let's all you. calm it down, and I'll explain to you. <laughs> uh, but first of all, I'll tell you that it's borderless photo and under a minute, 16 meg memory. It supports both SD and the SDA card. Shut your face. Oh, that's awesome. I can't Wait, shut my face because I, then I can't talk about hold the Hold on. I thing, didn't, we didn't approve that picture before you printed it. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, run through managers now it's going to be all over the internet. So people are going to Photoshop uh, uh, Wangs. Well, it's printing out right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it comes out fully printed. It's completely dry. It's completely dry you because, can't smear it. Because there's no ink in the camera. It's basically, uh, th there's, there are crystals in the paper, and it heats up as it's printing That's out. so awesome. And so right there, you don't ever have to buy ink for it at all. It just poops it out right there. Wow. Yeah. See? It just falls out right oh, there. Oh, wow. 
Now the color isn't perfect. I mean, it's kind of bluish. This but is what it looks you would good. look like if you were split in half. Can you uh, see that's that? That's how that's how your that's body. That's pretty would awesome, look. though. I love that. Yeah. So it's it's a really it's a really great really great camera. And like you said, if yeah. if you're sad about Polaroid, I am ditching its uh, its right. classic uh, model. Then, yeah. then the Tomy and this Z in technology cool. is going to be in other products as well. It's not just in this camera. They're going to have home printers and other devices that'll actually use. I, it. I would imagine so. Yeah. And then you know, hopefully we'll we'll then we'll get stuck paying a lot money for paper as opposed, as opposed to, to paying for the for ink. Hey, how these pr printers are so cheap? <laughs> oh. Oh, now I gotta buy ink. Oh, I get it. It's I'm cheaper poor. to buy a new printer all the now time. Now I'm poor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Can we move on to something that I'm very excited about? Yeah. Because you, you also have the Casio Exelum FC100. Yeah. One of those catchy names we like. Yep. So I have the uh, the EX F1, which I love. You love that? Yeah. Do you think this one's better? This one's pretty sweet. Uh, listen, let's talk about mainly the price. It's got a it's got a, re a retail price of $400, but you do get 9.1 megapixel pocket size camera, which is nice. Mm -hmm. 5x optical inner zoom lens. 2.7 inch LCD, and then this is the kicker: burst mode that takes 30 shots per second. Oh my uh, god! So you can make those those films that you were thinking about <laughs> making for AE, Kev. Uh, HD movie function in 720p as well. So very cool. Pretty sweet camera. That's and awesome. So so it can take these the high speed photos at 60 frames a second. But how does the the feature look? I mean, on the FC100. It looks pretty good. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, do you, yeah, on. go ahead. Do All right. Something, Kevin. So what are you gonna? Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna turn it on. And very I'm cool. Just gonna, yeah. So if you just wanna. Oh, wacky high-speed stuff going on here. Oh. Hey! Let's yeah, do it's it. Not, it's not taking it any like I was doing something at Okay, but if it were to take a photo, yeah. it would look six megapixels, and it would look like there were well, 30 it, of them it, every it, second. Wait, that's not it. it would, oh, wait, here we go. Oh, wait, oh, here, we go. oh here we go. Now you're back on. Wow! Dead air! Oh, wait, what's going oh, wait, on? No, wait, okay, no, it's going. It. It's shooting. Uh, it's now, now, the, now the television program's busy. Please wait. All right, we're loading the images for you kids at home. What's happening here? Okay. Let's Damn you! <laughs> what? How? I told you not to embarrass me in public, camera. Uh, hey. <laughs> time to disown it. But, yeah. Okay. Well. Anyway, had it worked. It's, it's a lot of times we had a problem with doing the scan out. Yeah. The moment you the plug camera. it in. It's not the, the camera. It's, it's coming in. Us. Yeah. It's, it's 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 our fault. Oh. Okay. And by our fault, I mean my fault. And uh, it's been really nice working with you guys. Oh yeah. Thank you. I've enjoyed my time with you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I appreciate it, Olivia. Well, Kevin. Before you leave, you have a release date for this thing. Uh, this uh, comes out in March. And okay. I promise we'll work when you actually go and use it into your own lives. You promise? I promise. That's a big promise. Hardwick well, seal of approval. Yep. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank we'll you try to much. get it to work because I, I, I do I do want to check but it out. For those of you at home that are doing this is stop motion, that's, this is what we were yeah, doing. This is it, yeah, like. but it would look yeah. like a replay. I'm not in the shot. Now I'm in the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Coming out, more CES exclusives. And while you're waiting, be sure to keep your iPod fed with our CES fashions at gfrontsy.com slash podcast. Stick around, everybody. We're going to be right back. We'll see ya. behind me there's lots of people now, last night was the digital experience and exclusive sneak preview of ces before the convention hall opens its doors only select members of the press can get in and of course our kristen adams was there with an exclusive look every year on the eve of ces pepcom hosts a pre-party showcasing some of the latest tech before it even hits the floor this is the digital experience now, Alienware always has something cool for gamers. Tell me what's up this year. This is really the big new bad boy in the block, the M17. This is really all about the first ATI Crossfire X notebook. So having dual 3870s inside, the latest DDR3 memory, quad-core extreme processors, as well as a great 1920 by 1200 LCD. It starts at 1299. Okay. And at 1999, you're gonna get Crossfire X, three gigs, and a 200 gig hard drive. I'm here at the IPVO booth. This is the first uh, integrated photo frame that's wirelessly integrated with the computer. So all your old photos, the thousands of photos you took, just store in your hard drive, can wirelessly stream with the photo frame itself. We're also creating a software for the iPhone. You can use the iPhone to access the internet to get on Flickr or Picasa and have a string wirelessly to the frame itself. And what is this going to cost us? $199. There's a couple of things going on here at the Nanomatic booth. 
First is a new software application called Nano Navi. It's available for download right now for free on Facebook and MySpace and a few other social networking sites. Essentially what it does is it pulls all of your information from your MySpace page, from Facebook, etc., into one integrated software. It takes it one step further by giving you GPS access as well. So not only can you see what your friends are doing, but you can literally see what your friends are doing. And they've also created a device called the Nano Finder, uh, which is a GPS tracking device for your pet. So you can put this on, you know where Lassie is at all times. She'll be in the US sometime soon for under $100. I hope you guys enjoyed our look at the digital experience. There's lots of cool gear here that promises to make this the biggest consumer electronics show yet. Oh, the beloved Jesus phone. It's an unstoppable juggernaut on the tech landscape. Can anyone dethrone it? Sure, I might have mixed some metaphors there, but so what? Let's find out. We're going in the loop. The world. From the minute the touchscreen wonder hit the market, everyone has been trying to play catch up. Now, a new crop of cutting edge devices running operating systems by Google and Palm are trying to claim the mobile crown. Will these phones finally get the edge on Apple or be classed out once again? Now, let's mix it up in the loop. Joining me to help us make sense of it all, news editor for CrunchGear.com, one of my favorite sites, Peter Ha is here, and tech journalist and livecaster at Pop17.com, Miss Sarah Austin. Welcome to the loop, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You guys enjoying CES uh, this year? Yeah, Hell definitely. Yes. Yeah. Have you copy and pasted everything you wrote down from last year or just changed the, changed the numbers <laughs> to make it look like you've attended? I've done the copy and paste. Good, good. B Peter, everyone was expecting a lot of, of, of new Android phones right. to take on the iPhone. We, were, we, we kept waiting. We knew you know, the OS is here. Maybe it had matured or would be by the end of the year. Yeah. Did you see much on that front? Uh, you know, honestly, there's no new Android phones, but there are a couple companies making some Android tablets. Yeah. Um, Asus is talking about maybe making an Android computer. But other than that, you know, there's your excitement level seems through on. the roof for the fact that there's an Android tablet you and know, not a phone, right? I mean, it's a little disappointing. It is a little bit, but it's actually going to be pretty cool if they can convert it to a bigger tablet. And um, you know, they're basically going to be doing what I, what Apple's trying to do with an iPhone sort of right. uh, Mac tablet. Well, yeah, and everybody's saying, oh, there's going to be a Mac tablet, Sarah. If they get the Android running in a big enough tablet, does does Apple now have to play catch up? In, in your opinion, like, would you put Android on par with the iPhone OS? I would actually. I would say that they have a lot of competition coming up right now, and they're probably already working on it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I keep waiting for them to announce it, but I haven't seen it. Uh, what do you think of the, the new Palm OS here? I mean, it was called Nova. We we saw what mm -hmm. is it, Palm Pre? Is awesome. The, uh, yeah. Oh my Are gosh. I might just throw my iPhone away. Really? You're, yeah. that, you're that convinced already? It's great. Okay, so what, what, what makes you want to chuck the iPhone out the window? I mean, it's got everything. You can get your applications. Developers are working on it heavily already. And Palm is making a big comeback with this. I didn't know. I was saying, oh, forget it. They're going down the tube. But I'm heavily surprised with this. Peter, do, do, you, do you agree with that as well? Do you think this is Palm's big comeback? Uh, I definitely think it's their big comeback. And uh, you know, I carry an iPhone and a BlackBerry. And I think as soon as uh, the pre comes out, I'm going to be ditching both of those. <laughs> what, what happened at this, at, this, at this conference that I missed? I mean, I saw the bullet points. And it does look amazing. But right. what has you so ready to put, put the uh, you know, it's, it's just find out if your iPhone blends? It's, it's the little things. Like, uh, they have these unobtrusive notifications. So, you know, for instance, on your BlackBerry, if you know you get a calendar event, you have to hit dismiss for it to go away, right? right. Well, on the new Palm OS, it just pops up on the bottom, but it doesn't stop what you're doing. Okay, so, so it's not, swipe not it getting in your way at all. Right. All right. I know it does have A2DP, which is cool. Any word on right. cut and paste or picture messaging? Like, come on. <laughs> Did they say anything about that? I mean, it, uh, I can't believe the iPhone still doesn't do it. Right. I it's, know. It's so annoying. How can you not have cut yeah. and paste? I mean, but do we do we trust Palm? I mean, I know out of the box we've got we've got Google, we've got Facebook apps, right? They were showing off some stuff like that, right. Microsoft Office, etc. Mm -hmm. um, do we know that now, just based off the hardware and what we've seen, that, what we've seen of the hardware, that it's it's an iPhone killer, or do we still have to wait till we get it in our hands? <laughs> you know, we've got six months before it comes out, yeah. so. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Sarah, what phones did impress you? Uh, other than the Palm Pre, I know it was, a, it was an excellent PowerPoint, but uh, uh, has there been any hardware on the floor that you've seen that, that has you excited? As far as launching, I'm not getting too excited, but I am excited about the Nokia N97. Okay, what's, what's going on with the N97? I love their N series, so. Yeah, me too. I have the N95 already, and I love it. It's got 3G on it, but the N97 has the QWERTY keyboard and it's touchscreen, 
It's compatible with Wi-Fi, so you can do almost everything with it that you would want to do on your laptop. Okay, so N97 or Palm Free? Palm Free. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Peter, would you, is the Palm Free, is that going to take it for cell phones here? Uh, before I saw the Palm Free, it was all about the BlackBerry 8900. And then Samsung has this new phone called the Show that has a built-in Pico projector, which is pretty cool. Right. But after seeing the pre, uh, all right, that's, that's all that I, I did not. I did not expect to wake up this morning and hear uh, so much hype about it, but right. apparently it has won everybody over. Thank you guys so much for coming on and keeping us in the yeah. right. I can't wait to have a pre-party with you later this year. I'm sure it'll happen. All right, now let's check back with Olivia Munn. Okay, thanks, Kev. We heard from those guys. Now let's get some feedback from the real experts. It's the virtual audience. All right, let's get this thing started and talk to Rob from New Jersey first. Now, what phone makes you want to break your contract to buy it? Uh, the N97 looks really impressive, so I might want to wait to see what happens with that. But I was really hoping for a 30-gig iPhone, and I would <laughs> jump right on that. But, no, Apple disappointed me last week, so. Yeah, but, Apple disappointed a lot of people last but week. But now, after listening to that loop, the pre, I really want to get my hands on Pre's good. On well, that. you know, Sarah also said the N97 is, is one she's looking at, but then she followed that right up with, with the pre. Yeah, I'd probably go with the pre. <laughs> no, no, so, it was, yes, the pre. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, let's go to Jack from Pennsylvania, if we can. Uh, Jack, what, what can't you do on your cell phone right now, and, and keep it television-friendly, please, <laughs> that you, you'd, oh, like, you'd like to do? Well, I locked my keys in the car the other day, so I think a remote starter and door locks would be awesome. That's oh. like, I haven't thought of that, but that is right. going to be my new answer. Are you, are you now worried that losing your cell phone, you'd also lose your, your private photos, your contacts, and the keys to your car, though? Oh. Well, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have a cheap little generic phone, so <laughs> I can't do any of that stuff anyway. No, I like yeah. the wire. It's a nice throwback. It's a, a, in addition oh to the God, rotary what, dial, it's, it's pretty that? sweet. <laughs> it gets the ladies. You're like, I'm tethered. I, this, but I, 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 like, I, I like the ability to open up your car. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, that would be a cool function. Finally, let's hear from a good old Captain Smee. Captain Smee, do you spend more time on your phone or your laptop? And if you do, do you think ultimately the cell phone will make all other digital devices just obsolete? I honestly spend more time on my laptop, but that's just because I have a phone from the Stone Age. If I actually had one that could get internet and do something that was worthwhile, I would use it quite a bit. But I don't think it's going to make the, uh, the laptop obsolete because I can use my cell phone when I'm out in public and out in the, around town and whatnot. When I'm at my house, I don't want to be strapped to a desktop either, but I want a screen bigger than my cell phone. So I'm going to want to use my laptop for that around the house. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with the captain there. A, a yeah, no one wants to write a dissertation on it. I mean, you're good at, at, at talking and multitasking and I typing tersely worded emails without even looking oh, at oh, it. Yeah. But me, I, I, need a, I need a laptop. Need, I agree with the captain yeah, you there. need a second to, to think yes. about it and see it out. Yeah, I do. All right, well, thank you guys so much. I honestly do not know what we do if you suddenly just stopped appearing to us in this tiny little box. It's, it's, like, it's like magic. It what do they do it? I don't know. Wishes well, and dreams? Well, no, it's a series of uh, tubes, and it's like the internet, and then we get it onto our, oh. our TV, and then there's okay, people well back in a booth somewhere that... It's not nearly as interesting of an explanation, but thanks. And magic and unicorn. Oh, sweet! So, there you go. All right, one of the hottest topics here at CES is the incredible OLED yep. TV. That's organic light-emitting diode, and they look amazing. We saw some last year at CES, but this year they're back, and they're even more amazing, if yes. you can believe it, and you should. Now, Chris Hardwick is on the floor with the biggest one ever, but first, it's the OLED revolution. It's time for the next revolution in TVs, and its name is OLED, short for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Made from natural materials and sporting a million to one contrast ratio, these titans of TV are the thinnest, lightest, and greenest screens you can get, blowing away the latest LCDs or plasmas. But like anything else, they're starting off with a hefty price tag. However, OLED has officially arrived, and it's destined to take over the TV world. I uh, need one of those immediately. Yes, I need one faster than immediately. Coming up, we're actually not done. Nope. We have more CES Insider News and Updates. Now, if it makes your life simpler or better or more awesome, we've got it live on this set. Plus, there's this. Coming up in a bit, I'm going to be showing you the latest in high-tech automotive gadgets. And I hope somebody invented that ejector seat. So stick around.
I'm sorry, I was just laying down a fat piece. Oh, yeah? No big deal. Timbaland showed me that one. Yeah, on when we were the hanging out. Garage band? Yeah. You know, I'm dropping <laughs> five, band, five bucks. <laughs> Yo, here's a fresh one. All right, we've seen a lot of fast moving tech today, but we haven't seen any that's faster than what we're about to see right now. That's right, CES actually has cars. Cars. Let's find out if they've built my dream car yet. Oh. You know what it is? What is it? A DeLorean that travels through time. That was from back to the. Is it real? Did that happen? Yeah, it happened. Well, it happened. We'll have the answer. Yeah, come on, I'll show it to you. Let's go. <laughs> Now that everything is pretty much Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled, the competition at technology in the car is heating up. And one of the easiest ways to get to a tech head's heart is to take something already cool and add night vision to it. This is my man Danny with FLIR. He's going to explain Nav TV night vision camera to me. Thank you, Z. Yes, FLIR night vision utilizes the FLIR Pathfinder camera. It is a heat sensing camera sees about three to five times further than traditional headlights so yes over a thousand feet you'll be able to see those deer and those people in your way <laughs> this system here is, is demonstrating a simple black and white image run you about twenty seven hundred dollars for the cable twenty four ninety five for the camera itself who needs satellite radio when you can access radio from around the world in your own car and now you can with the my roamer blouse hunt radio this is my man rob he's gonna explain the technology to us how you doing good how are you doing good thanks well, we're very excited to announce the world's first internet car radio. Blaupon and MyRoma can now offer you thousands and thousands of radio stations from all around the world. How does that work? Though? How does it work? Well, you simply just use Bluetooth technology found in the head unit, connect that to your mobile phone, the mobile phone acts as the modem, and it gives you access to the internet. Now, I already have a phone with Bluetooth in it. How much is it going to cost me to get this head unit into my car? You're probably looking anywhere in the vicinity of about 300 US dollars to about 460 US dollars. Now, this is the highlight of the show for me. TV in your car. Satellite TV in the car brought to you by AT&T Cruise Pass. For $12.99, you can get a satellite unit on top of your car. $28 a month, you can get 22 channels of video and 20 channels of audio. And the coolest thing is, even if you're going through a tunnel, they put a buffer in this thing for about three minutes. So you won't even lose audio or video. Man, the only thing I think that would make this cooler is if they can put this in my hovercraft, we can take it to Costa Rica for spring break. Who's coming with me? <laughs> Paleolithic era? Oh, well, there's always next year. So fond of that era. Don't forget to take our poll, everybody. Let us know what you think the best mobile operating system is. Is it Android OS 10 for the iPhone, BlackBerry OS 4, or is it Windows Mobile? To vote, go to g4tv.com slash CES, or text your answer to G4TXT, that's 44898, and standard rates will apply. All right, right now, let's check in with Chris, who's at the Dolby booth, where they've got a surround sound headset that will make you feel like you're in the game. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'm right here inside the Dolby tunnel, and as I am inside the Dolby tunnel, in turn, Dolby is inside a lot of different products here. Let's start first with this Pioneer. This is part of the Kuro series. It's a 50-inch LCD and it's just full Dolby 7.1 surround. Now, obviously there's HD video, but it's also HD audio. You didn't see that coming, or if you did, you're amazing. So this, this is amazing picture and amazing sound as well. So moving from the very large to the very tiny, this is the LG Renoir, and uh, what Dolby has done is infuse its technology into the phone to really give your phone, because so much people are they're watching mobile content now, and but the sound quality is usually really crappy. It's a lot of high-end stuff. So they've added low-end, and uh, you're, you're gonna hear a lot more bass when you're listening to, to audio on this phone right here. So here's a little Dolby icon right there, and you can hit it, and it'll tell you, ah, now the Dolby's on, and you really hear a difference. It really fills out the sound nicely on your phone. Speaking of filling out sound, what would we complete without something awesome for the gamers? Because uh, that's quite a huge audience. Logitech G35, Dolby has put their technology in here. Full 7.1 surround sound for gaming. It gives you such incredible spatial awareness inside your first person shooters. Hey, a grenade's back there. I heard some ninja sneaking up on me. Hey, I can actually hear my youth escaping. It really is amazing technology that they've done here, so look for that as well. But uh, right now, back to you guys. All right, coming up, a look at your new headphones, even more. Yeah, time to toss out those crackly hardware earbuds. We've got top-of-the-line sound quality for you, including a set that puts a 5.1 home theater in your head. That's crazy. In your head. Crazy. Where are the voices going to go? Point 
percent rounded. Coverage of CES 099. Well done. Plenty more cool stuff to come, everybody. Imagine a room filled with 10,000 Tony Starks. Yeah. Uh, 300 uh, Hank Pims. Okay. Yeah. And 60 Reed Richards. Uh. Says. Yeah. Only without the super <laughs> stretching. At CES. <laughs> it happens here. Now we're joined by America's best looking nerd, Chris Hardwick. Look at that. Chris is going to give us the latest and greatest in multi-phasic auditory ear coverings, or as we call them on Earth, headphones. 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 Yes. Headphones. So this first pair is completely wireless and doesn't even need an MP3 player to work. Multi-phasic. Uh -huh. I am sorry. I just didn't do the real thing. <laughs> yes, this is the Skull Candy Double Agent SD headphones. Uh, all you do is pop in an SD card directly into the headphones. Can I put you, them on? Yeah, you can put them on. You can put them anywhere you want. You connect it via USB to your computer and then load the music right onto it. You navigate to whatever song you want to directly from the headphones. And you can also plug them into a normal MP3 player. But where is the fun in that? <laughs> it's available right now for 99 bucks. This isn't a you have to wait for it. Right. Which you is guys nice now. to see. Yes, instant gratification is nice. So much yeah. stuff. Oh, months from now. What's odd it's is right that now. SD card has absolutely no music on it. Yet Olivia is just rocking out. Are the voices in your head doing a freestyle? Or what's going on? Olivia sings to her own tune. She's mm. got a whole thing going on. And then in a second Smack she that. Get on the floor. Smack that. Give me some more. That's oh my God, she thinks you look great on TV. She's singing Smack That, Get on the Floor. Smack That, Give me some more. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay, good. That's what uh, it's like very cool. the, the second pair here claims to produce audio from every direction uh, while you're gaming. And this, I mean, it looks something out of Blade Runner mixed with a little Johnny Blade Runner, Olivia said Tron, which I really like appreciate. Yeah. A little Tron, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what is this, the Psycho 5.1? How does Psycho 5.1 gaming headphones? Uh, okay, it uses what's called Psycho Waveguide Technology, which I have a feeling they invented that word. Uh, <laughs> they work the same way as a 5.1 home theater works. The ear cups hold two subwoofers, but the headphone bridge actually houses five audio drivers, front, uh, left and right, then rear, left and right, and then, of course, center. And when you put them on, you are automatically in the sweet spot of a home theater, <laughs> and, at, but I'm not anywhere near any girls, right uh, yeah. where, where sound should come. Uh, uh, sweet spot of absence. Any direction. <laughs> hey, everybody, how come I wasn't invited to your party? Uh, how many times have I heard that? You can also open up the ear cups for ventilation so you can uh, cool off your sweaty ear meat, and they're available early this year for $300. Okay, now, if they work, those are pretty amazing, because so, we've seen, like, lots of noise canceling headphones in the past. Yeah. But how do these cancel noise when you're talking and when you're listening? It's interesting that you should ask that, Olivia Munn, because I've got the answer right here. Uh, the Alltech Lansing Backbeat headphones basically uh, use a bunch of both. They, they, uh -huh. they use built-in microphones and noise canceling to do just that. One mic uses open mic technology, and it finds the background noise and then cancels it out. And the other mic uses audio IQ technology to boost your voice by separating your voice from all the rest of the noise. And this essentially results in letting you hear your surroundings without taking off your headphones and without talking like this. <laughs> uh, you can get an extremely clear, clear call of uh, both talking and listening at the same time. Wireless with stereo Bluetooth. And the 906 model includes a stereo Bluetooth adapter for any MP3 player. Awesome. And it's available oh. in late February. For $129. That's not that bad. I'm just sort of holding it up like a like a dead. <laughs> it looks like you're, you're a, I yeah. caught this out on the range. <laughs> Look what I got, Dad. Uh, yep. Sadly, you'd have to use the adapter with the iPhone because it doesn't support stereo Bluetooth. Uh, which and I am crying. But maybe the pre will. Hey, it does maybe actually, they'll announce it, it at Macworld. Oh, oh no, wait, wait a minute. A minute. No. Oh, no. Sarah McLaughlin, though. All right, Chris, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, guys. A pleasure. I would love to, for her to teach me music. Hey, where are you? Will you have more for us tomorrow? Are you still here? Yes, I'm going to have tons of more stuff tomorrow. I got a notebook roundup. Let me show you some Netflix. And okay, cool. Nice. But right now, I'm going to go pick up some booth babes. Hey, don't talk <laughs> don't there you forget go. your, your I don't cap. know how that Ladies. interfaces with them, but I'm, I'm sure you'll figure it out. All right, it's time for the 30 second pitch. I, I think we know the drill by now. One company with a unique product gets 30 seconds to wow us. So let's head on over to Allison. Thanks, guys. With me is Laura Mitchell from Nokia. Now, Laura, I hear this uh, N97 that you got here has a lot of nifty little features going on with it. Can you give them all to me in 30 seconds? I believe I can. Let's go. Okay, so this is the Nokia N97. It is the latest N-series flagship product, and it comes with a brilliant 3.5-inch touch display. It also has a full hard QWERTY keyboard. It has up to 48 gig of internal storage, which um, allows you to bring your favorite music, movies, and other multimedia with you without compromising performance, which makes it a truly mobile computer. It's going to be released um, at the end of first half of 09 and in the U.S. shortly thereafter. Wonderful. I don't think I know a few iPhones that are getting a little nervous. Back to you guys. Oh, well, thank you, Allison. That was the most informative 30 seconds of my life. Of your adult life, right? No, of my life, actually, yeah.
Uh, but are you gonna buy one? I, 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 like, I hate to jump on the pre-bandwagon, yeah. but I'm, I kind of got to go there right now. Like, everything that I've seen about it looks amazing. But I know you, you have to actually get your hands on it and review it and yeah. do all that stuff before you... Yeah, unless I'm it. paid. Unless you're paid. In which case, pay. yes, amazing. Any <laughs> device. But not yet. You didn't have the, the check yet. But so no, no, it hasn't check. cleared. So. Yeah. All right, you guys know what it's time for? What? What? Oh, I'd like to answer that question, but huh? it's time for the hot list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wanted answers, and we've got them for you in a handy list format. Let's face it, lists are so much easier to look at than a paragraph. Stupid paragraphs. Who hates paragraphs? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Some of you are with me. All right, here are the top three hottest phones. Every CES, the new batch of cell phones, is even stranger than last year's models. And this year is no exception, thanks to newcomer Logic Wireless and their Logic Bolt, the first mobile phone with a built-in projector. Watch VGA videos stored on the phone or hook up an external device like your favorite gaming console and project an image up to 64 inches across. The Logic Bolt also sports a standard issue 320 by 240 touchscreen, a 3 megapixel camera, and GPS. And the best part, it's only $100. With a T-Mobile contract, you guys know how I feel about that, but it's $100. Now, Crackberry Fiends are going to get the best fix of their life with the new BlackBerry Curve 8900. It is the thinnest and lightest full pretty BlackBerry ever. And even though it's ready for business up front, the smartphone is all party in the back. Record video or take pictures with the built-in 3.2 megapixel camera that boasts image stabilization and an automatic flash. Then upload your pics with easy access to sites like Flickr, MySpace, Facebook, and the 480 by 360 screen is big, bright, and one of the best we have ever seen. Expect to see these phones at your local Crackberry dealer sometime in February. Now, if you consider yourself an outdoorsy type, kind of like Pereira, or maybe you're just kind of a spaz who tends to drop their phones, like me, take a look at the Motorola Rugged Tundra. This 3G clamshell phone meets something called 810F government ruggedization specs, which means you can beat on it and it'll still work. Yeah. It's also the... <laughs> shut up. Gross. It's also... I didn't mean beat it. You know what I mean. It's also the first phone with Crystal Talk Plus, a technology that keeps background noise to a minimum. Super durability will cost you $109 after rebate. I'm sorry, uh, did it just get sexy in here? Yeah! I love it when a bunch of dudes clap for me after a sentence like that. Yeah, I didn't hear a lot of girls no. saying woo! That can only mean one thing. It's it's time to talk about what the adults. What guys say woo, by the way? It says, guy, oh. guys woo all the time, it happens. Woo! Yeah, not like that. Uh, it's at the Adult Entertainment Expo, everybody. That's right. G4 is taking you deep. Oh. See what I did there? I, I see what you deep did. Deep inside the 2009 Adult Entertainment Expo for the most extensive coverage you will find anywhere. Plus, for the first time, we are going to show you the AVN Awards Ceremony. Yeah, I hear yeah. that it was hard uh, before because there's just so much going on that we're not allowed to yeah. show. So somehow... We got it for you. We, we figured it out. Check out AE09 January 25th only on G4. And don't forget to visit G4TV.com slash AEE for details. Now, coming up, don't go anywhere. We've got more from the mecca of tech entertainment on the way. And don't forget, you can see all the best CEO clips anytime, anywhere, right on your mobile phone. More info is available at G4TV.com slash mobile. We'll be right back. CES 09 Live and where only on, on G4. G4. From gadgets to gear to multiple ways to waste a perfectly good Saturday morning, we've got it. Remember uh, back when we were talking to you about all the amazing new OLED TVs that, that were here? Yeah. I mean, we were raving. Yeah, and how Hardwick was going to show us the biggest one ever made. Yeah, well, we lied, but now we're going to make good. Yes. We're, gonna, we're, we're fine here. Right now, we're going to see it, so take it away, Chris. All right, I'm at Samsung. There's so much awesome stuff here. First of all, this is the 8 series right here. This is a Ultra slim television set, 240 refresh rate, so it's going to be totally smooth and also Wi-Fi capable. Besides that, there's all sorts of camera. Hey, can I can I steal you for a second here? Uh, this right here is the uh, the TL100. This is the it's just a quick little point and shoot, but you can see how tiny and slim it is. 12.2 megapixels, huge screen on the back, phenomenal. And right here, this is a full HD, the first solid state drive camera. Now I know some other cameras have flash memory. This is solid state memory, so they could go up to 64 gigs. You got a little inputs in the back there, which I think is a great design. Back here it shoots 4.7 megapixel still photos you got the flash up here and this is a really cool feature a little thumb ridge right here so you can shoot down here uh gangsta style as your friends jump into cactuses and try to get on break.com so a lot of amazing stuff down here at the samsung booth i really wish you could all be here but you're not so i'll have to enjoy everything myself 
I'd like to say that my sentiment still stands. Oh, yeah? Do want. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. But here are the results of our poll. We asked you which of the following was the best mobile operating system. Was it Android, OS 10 for the iPhone, BlackBerry, OS 4, or Windows Mobile? Surprisingly, not Windows. No, the answer with 34% is Android, beating out OS 10 for the iPhone. So nice. let's hear it for 34%. some open source loving. Well done, Android. All right, let's check back in with the uh, CES crack commando squad sent to prison for a crime they didn't commit <laughs> to see what they're going to bring us tomorrow. I'm guessing something expensive, maybe electronic. Let's find out. Kristen, are you there? Thanks, guys. Today was insane, and tomorrow is shaping up to be even bigger. I'll have all the latest gaming news from CES, including Killzone. Plus, I'll have more on the hottest green tech this year. Big C, what's on your plate for tomorrow? Hey, Kristen, tomorrow it's all about GPS and plenty of it. They're debuting the hottest new GPS systems right here, and I'll be bringing you the best. And also here, there's some super hot Lamborghini. Allison, what do you have lined up? Huh? Oh, I'm just preparing for the robot invasion. Yeah, that's because I'm checking out the latest in all things robot, including the super cool spy bot. Are they our friends or our enemies? I'm going to find out tomorrow. Back to you guys. Thanks, Allison. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be hanging out at the Sony booth again, and we're going to visit Panasonic. Now, rumor has it they have a television set that's not even on the market yet. Chris? All right, thanks, guys. So uh, basically coming up, I've got notebooks and netbooks. There's going to be notebooks you can take out in the sun. There's going to be notebooks with, with two screens. There's going to be netbooks that are so amazing. Uh, you'd be a jerk if you didn't watch. Uh, so anyway, that's coming up. But right now, back to you guys. Anyway, so I have a $50 per diem. So if you like buffets, I'm, I'm the guy. All right. She's oh, okay. Yeah, who needs match.com? Okay. $50 <laughs> at CES. Love can be found. <laughs> Could probably give her a set of headphones and stuff. Yeah. Hey, no, back. no, they really are cool. I swear. <laughs> All right, everybody. That is it for today's coverage of CES, but there is tons more to come tomorrow. Right. We haven't even cracked the surface of all the insane stuff we have coming out. That is true. We will continue bringing you up-to-the-minute news on everything in the tech universe. Plus, big, big guests tomorrow, everybody. Mark Cuban and Jimmy Fallon live on stage. Maybe together. Maybe Indian leg wrestling. Who what? knows? Plus, a notebook that could be the MacBook Air Killer. A new Canon HD video camera and roughly 37 other new products. And I'm not kidding. 37, 37. products. Yes. You guys, check out g4tv.com slash CES for additional exclusive CES coverage. And that includes our live streaming Best of CES event starting right now. It's like right now. Is it really right now? It's like very quickly. G4's live coverage continues tomorrow. Good night, everybody. And coming up right now, don't miss Blade Runner.